Yes, that's exactly what we were doing. We were waiting for the tea to steep. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, War Games 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all, because today, Solo Game Day. We are busting out again. Zaya, Legends of a Drift System, but it is also Embers of a Forsaken Star. If you missed it last night, and let's face it, most of the world did because YouTube was down. So because of that, we had like 85 people watching live, and then YouTube was having a lot of issues, and then there was just me. So I thought, you know what? I already have it out here. I had a lot of fun. It seemed like people were enjoying themselves, and they wanted to actually see a full playthrough of it. And with all the issues that YouTube was having, thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and run it back again today. So that's what we are doing. So Zaya, Legends of a Drift System, uh, originally designed by Cody Miller, and the expansion, Embers of Forsaken Star, uh, designed by Cody Miller, as well as Ira Fay, published by Cody Miller's company, Far Off Games. So welcome, everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the facts. All right, so... It's going to be uh, three, four hours today, so just settle in for that. Uh, I, I was letting my tea steep because we're, it's going to be a bit today. I am going to act as if yesterday's stream never happened. So what does that mean? We're going to go through the setup. We're going to go through step by step of each turn of the first uh, couple turns. Then it'll speed up from there, and that's kind of how we're going to go about teaching the game. All right? Yeah, that's it. So if y'all do end up liking the stream today, certainly would appreciate if y'all give it a thumb down below, subscribe to the channel, hit a little bell notification so you get notified whenever we go live. And if you want to be a really, really, really cool person, as well as a member of the herd, you can go to Patreon dot com forward slash hchq support the show there a couple bucks a month if you find what we do here on the show is worth it and you find value in that certainly certain certainly would appreciate that y'all all right so i forgot to clean my glasses so we're going to talk about legend uh, zaya legend of a drift system while i bust that out because that is really really blurry thanks jess for the little cleaner spray anyway so we originally played this uh, we had the traveling prototype. We were privy to uh, get a copy of that. You know what? We're going to look at when that originally came out. Because I backed this on Kickstarter. It originally came out in 2014. So my guess is the Kickstarter was probably 2013. Uh, at the very birth of the show, ahead of the show, whatever. And uh, we were really looking forward to playing this. Kind of a space opera type game. And then we played it. Multiplayer. We weren't really keen on the game, really didn't enjoy it at all, and pretty much put that to bed. And then Khan, earlier last year, uh, gave me a haul of solo and two-player type games to be able to show off on the stream, or on the show, and this was included in that. And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a try as a solo game and see if we enjoy it more, because where I was as a gamer in 2014 and where I am now seven years later, vastly different. And I've learned to really enjoy solo games. So the question is, would I enjoy this experience? And uh, come to find out, the answer is absolutely yes. Now, coming into this. Try that again. A little sharpener, a little uh, pencil sharpener. Took a header. All right, as I was saying, sorry about that, live TV. There. All right. As I was saying, there's a lot of luck. There's a lot of randomness in this game. Let's go into that right off. If you do not like that in your games, you're not, there's just no way around it. You are not going to enjoy this. I do not like a lot of luck and a lot of randomness in long multiplayer games. However, the one place that I have, or two places I would say, that I either embrace it or can deal with it Short, thinky filler type stuff, whatever, that's fine. Or solo experiences, solo narrative games. Think of it as kind of a role-playing type-esque game. And last night I thought that this reminded me in a lot of ways of the Hunters from GMT Games, you know, where you are a U-boat commandant and you're going around, a lot of die rolling and things happen. You have some agency, 
and some you don't. And that's what this is. But if you're a fan of sci-fi and space, so if you can get on board with the narrative and embrace the randomness, then this is going to be a really fun ride. If not, run away now. It's that simple. There's, that's the crux of it. So with that said, I think we ought to go ahead and get into it. I'm going to give a brief overview. Then we're going to go over the setup. Actually, check that. We're going to do it in the other order. We're going to go through the setup. And there are three rule books for this. There is the base game, the expansion game, and the solo. The solo trumps the expansion, which trumps the base game for setup stuff. And that's what we're going to go through. Uh, there are some decisions that y'all are going to have to help me make. So if you're watching this after the fact, y'all can always fast forward through that. And then from there, it's going to be a lot of my decisions. But the peanut gallery will have input. So without further ado, Zaya, Legends of a Drift System, along with the expansion, which I forget the name of it, Embers of a Forsaken Star. All right. And if I didn't welcome everybody, welcome. Hi, everybody. There we go. That's better. Let me grab some tea. Uh, we're just doing some orange pico today. Just pretty basic black tea for me. All right. Oh, that's hot. A little milk in there, a little sugar. You know, a little English tea, kind of-ish. All right. We're all set up there. We're ready. Here we go. So, rule book number one, rule book number two, and the solo one is inside of there. There you go. You have to be in for it for chaotic fun, not the strategic depth. There you go. All right. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to start off by setting up the map. Okay. So the map is going to be up here. Now with the expansion and in the solo game, we start out with near. Near is a space station orbiting a star. So near is kind of the star. And then we have the near or the kiln is the space station that orbits around it. Okay. All right. So with that said, we start out with near and then we reveal additional sectors, which are going to be these right here until we have at least two spawn points and minimum of four sectors total. Now I did shuffle all of these up. We're not going to go through that every time because it made a huge mess yesterday. So y'all are just going to have to take my word for it that I did. And here we go. You know we did because we didn't even see this one yet last night. Oh, also, one other thing that I think we ought to point out is whenever you are laying out tiles, you're going to see these symbols on the edges. The only symbol that has to match is the symbol that you say... Uh, where you're jumping off from. So if we have a ship and we're going from this space to over here, the only symbol that has to match is the triangle right here. It does not matter about anything else that is around because they are likely and or will just flat out will not match up. So with that said, let's go ahead and start off with that spot right there. And that is a triangle space. And you'll notice that the triangle is right here, so we're going to have to match that up. Before we do so, while it's face up, let's go over the anatomy of that tile. That tile, it's a gate. It's going to be a teleport, all right? Uh, not only that, it has a spawn point on it, spawn point number 10. We know the name of it is the Expedior Gate. We know it's a gate. It has a mission place here, so this is either going to be the start or end or a place to be able to draw mission cards there. And the first player to use this gate earns one fame point, which is one victory point. Awesome, good deal. So now that we have said that, we will set that up right there. Now the next one we're going to go ahead and draw, we'll use that little T symbol right there. So here we go. And that is Neo Vostok. This is an ice asteroid. There are hazard spots right there, there, and there. There's going to be a comet that is on there, so we need to go ahead and bust out a comet. And hey, we have a comet here that's going to move in the path of the arrows there. In addition to that, you notice there's another mission spot there, and there is going to be a uh, e exploration token on it. Now, we have all of them from the expansion game. All the base game ones are removed. So all of those in there. 
So we will put one of these, not being able to see what it is. There we go. We put one there, boom. That tile is good. And then where is it? The T. So this one is going to be upside down as well. All right. Now note, there is no spawn point on there. So we need a second spawn point. So we're going to go and we'll draw and we'll put one right here. So it's going to be that square symbol. The square symbol, so this is the brink. It's an anomaly, okay? This is going to have a gravity pull space right there and a nebula there in the middle. And it has a planet on it, a, planet, a neutral planet called TIG on it, as you can see right there, that also has a mission spot. Well, we have to get another exploration token. So we will grab one out of the cup of randomness. All right, there, and we said that was gonna be the square, so everything is upside down. Apparently we should have put near upside down, so everything else is facing us, but you know what? Why don't we do exactly that? because there's no real information outside of the orbit of near itself. So hey, now everything's face up, at least for the starter. All right, so if we look, there is one spawn point. There are four tiles. So we need two spawn points and a minimum of four tiles. Okay, so there we go. And there. So where do we wanna put this? Let's see, I guess we could, uh, put it right there so it's going to be kind of that little Y symbol. So why don't we move that up a little bit and the Y. Hey, there we go. We got Kempler 2. This is going to be one of the starter planets also that's going to have to come out and it does have a spawn point. So and look at that. All that is face up. So now that we have that right there is our starter map. So we have two spawn points. So we have one here and one there. In addition to that, a minimum of four tiles. We actually have five. So there we go. Awesome. So that's step one for the map setup. However, if Kempler 2 and our Laura, uh, Loth are not already revealed, we need to get now go searching for Loth. Loth, let's go ahead so y'all can see as I go through these. Looking for Loth, no. Nope. There's Loth. All right, so that's Loth. Then we are going to pick at random and we'll just kind of mix these up a bit. Again, now that we've kind of seen where stuff is. There, and then we need to grab five more tiles off the top or random, how about we do this? We'll do one, two, three, four, and that one's hiding from me, so five. So there are five more tiles there. We're gonna go ahead and set those there. All right, so there are five tiles here. Loth is going to get mixed in with those five and I'm gonna make a huge colossal mess of things as we go, as I am wont to do. There we go. All right, so those are pretty sufficiently mixed up. These six tiles now will go on top of the stack and that will be our draw stack to begin with, okay? So we have Kempler 2 and Loth is going to be one of the top six. Why does that matter? Because there are going to be NPCs, the Scoundrel, the Merchant, and the Enforcer that come into play and certain uh, planets are going to be the starting planets for the various NPCs. So the Scoundrel starts on Loth, the Enforcer will start on Kempler 2, we'll get there in a minute, and then the Merchant will start somewhere else and we'll, as that comes up. So with that said, the map is now set up. Now with the map, from there, what's going? Uh, let's go ahead and go over everything else that y'all are looking at. So we have the map, we have uh, the kiln, which is the space station right there. We have a comet that's out here. We need to put an exploration token on Kepler 2 right there. 
All right, now that we have done that, okay, so a couple other things on Kepler too. You'll notice that there is a planetary border all the way around that is bad to cross. You can cross it, but more on that. It has a spot to be able to buy some resources, a spot to sell other resources, and a mission spot on it as well. So what else are y'all looking at? There, as much as y'all are looking at here on screen, I assure you there is an equal to, if not greater amount that is off screen. We have the tier one ships. That is not just one ship. That is a whole bunch of ships. We will have to choose which ship we are going to start with here in a little bit. This is going to be our starting stuff. We start with 4,000 credits. We have five activation markers, one of which will be for energy, four for armed uh, systems, a little uh, post for our color, we're going to be yellow, obviously, and an impulse marker. In addition to that, we have the three MPC uh, Call it their play areas, I think is a good way to put that there. Then we have the fame point track. This is the victory point track. We are going to play either a 10 or a 15 point game today. First one to get their wins, either us as yellow or collectively the NPCs. The NPCs will gain points together. So either the NPCs win or we will win. All right, we'll go from there. Then we have the economy board. We still need to set this up as well, but we'll get there. We have titles that we can acquire. These are going to be things that can give us victory points. As you can see, the FP or fame points, fame points, victory points, same thing. Events. So with the expansion brings events that will come into play. So we will see potentially four maybe as many as five, possibly six, although unlikely. Uh, so it's probably going to be just four or five. Really, it's going to be three or five as we go. We have a massive stack of missions, all right? And full disclosure, I took all the missions that we had last night, put them to the bottom of the stack. We're not going to see those again. We have the RNGs, the random not, randomizers, i.e. dice. There's a six, an eight, a 12, and a 20-sided die. We have our tile stack. Obviously, we have our exploration tokens. And then whenever we get dead planets, we have relic tokens from the expansion as well. All right? Then up here, we have the victory point goal or the goal of our game. There is a stack of those. We will shuffle those up when we get ready to get started. Uh, the NPC stats. This is going to be some uh, stats that will uh, uh, dictate certain things for all of the NPCs there. And then we have the kiln. Whenever we dock with the kiln, uh, that will this represents being on this space right there. So that's everything that you're looking at. But then, what do you all not see right now? Well, first off, we have... That's really dark. I don't know what happened there. Let's fix that. That is going to be our player aids, first off, okay? So our player aids there are going to be, depending on what part of this that we are going to be working on. So I apologize for the, uh, the bumping right now. A moment. That's better. I like that. There we go. So uh, the round is going to be in that order. Our turn will consist of that. And then, hey, how do we get victory points? How do we win the game? There's that. In addition to that, what else do we have off camera? The various resources. I should point out the con has this 3D printed insert that fits into the box so everything stays in there. Eh, sort of stays in there. Then there are outfits. And we're going to go ahead, bring these out, and leave those out for right now because those are going to come into play uh, for a part of setup as well. These are going to be things that can trick out our ships, okay? There will be engines, there will be shields, and then pew pews, there are blasters, and there are uh, missiles, and then there are some other things in there. So these things will Tetris like into our ship over there. Then we have uh, what we saw a copious amount of last night, which are damage markers and ice damage markers as well. Then there are the metal credits, i.e. the money, ones and fives, there. And then there are the 3D printed dolls, i.e. the 3D printed ships. So we will start with one of these and then maybe progress as the game goes along to tier two and tier three ships there, okay? So speaking of those ships, I mentioned these are the tier one ships. Well, here are the player boards for the tier twos. There's a whole bunch of them. 
and the tier threes. Okay, but we don't need to worry about those until we get going. In addition to that, we have the abilities for the tier one ships and then the abilities also for the tier two and tier three ships. Again, when we choose our ship, we'll get into that then. Uh, then there is other player colors, but again, we're playing solo. These are the original exploration tokens. Those aren't in play. Uh, other impulse tokens, bounty tokens, and all of that whenever we become outlaws, which possibly will happen, and uh, other cards that are out of play for the solo game. All right, so that is pretty much everything that y'all aren't seeing off board. So there is a plethora, F.A., of things that are to this game. We have removed certain titles, we've removed certain events, we have the mit, we have all of this stuff set up, but there is more to set up. So let's go through the setup. We have the board, the map already set up, all of the things off uh, camera ready, we have the three NPCs ready to rock and roll, we have the fame point tracks set up. Now, I think would be a good time to go ahead and choose our ship. So, y'all, help me out. Let's go ahead and look at the anatomy of a shipboard first off. We have the name of it, what it looks like over here. We have uh, four armed tokens, four of these will go on there, which basically are action tokens for the various outfits that we're going to be able to put on our ship. And then when they are uh, unavailable, they will become disarmed. We have the price, which is going to cost us a thousand credits. We don't have to pay for the starting ship, though I don't believe. And then uh, the hold is how many spots can we hold things between cargo as well as outfits on it? So there will be 11 of them. Impulse, which is our base movement of three as a one-time thing. And then our energy track, which is going to be used with one of our tokens there, uh, is going to be how much energy we're going to be able to have on it, okay? So with that said, each of them has a backstory as well. And last night, we chose collectively where is it? It is the Swamp Rat. So I'd say maybe not the Swamp Rat tonight. That did not go well for us. But uh, the Easy Tiger, we have the Persistent Memory, which is ironic given my lack of memory. There is the Puddle Jumper, which i really not too keen on the Puddle Jumper. Um, then we have the Vagabond. We have the Ghost Stalker, which also not really keen on the Ghost Stalker. Um, just because it's very small. Um, so keep that in mind. Then uh, same with the numerator, just the shape of the holds. I'm not really keen on either, but hey, ultimately y'all are going to be the ones that make this choice. So which one do y'all want us to start with? Okay. I have no idea where you can get the insert. Sorry, Elk, we are not going Swamp Rat. Looks like Easy Tiger. All right, Easy Tiger it is. I thought that might be the case. That's kind of why it was face up. So the Easy Tiger is going to be our ship. So all of these will just go off to the side. All right, so now I am going to cover up the victory story because we don't get to see that until we actually go. But here we go. Here's the backstory of it. Welcome, Captain. The ship's computer greets you as you enter the hatch. Captain, you like the sound of that. The ship was a real steal. The used ship lot you got her from must have been pretty hard up for a sale. Those saps didn't know what they had, you chuckled to yourself while running through pre-flight. Just a little TLC, and you had yourself a genuine, if antiquated, Luftor. The jingle from the old model starts playing in your head. No star too far in a Luftor or something like that. Anyway, time to see if it's true. So there we go. Uh, it's burnt mustard yellow with pinstriping is the color. It comes with long range oxygen tanks, recess wipers, and low heat takeoff. That's just flavor, FYI. But there we go. All right. There is the easy tiger. All right, easy tiger. All right. So let's go ahead and get her set up. So we have our four armed markers. There, we have our impulse, impulse marker, our energy starts at eight, and 
we're all set with that. Now, before we talk about tricking her out, now we have to figure out, pick a number one to eight, okay? Because these are going to be, uh, this is going to be the, uh, the objective of our game. It's going to tell us how many points uh, either us and or the NPCs need to get uh, to win the game. And while y'all do that, let me go ahead and grab the, uh, the mini for the Easy Tiger. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's one through nine, but we I need to take out the 20 pointer because we are not playing a convincing victory. All right, so one to eight. We're going for, let's see, there are 60 of y'all out there. We'll go for when we get three of them. Uh, looks like five. Okay, so here we go. Here. All right, five. One, two, three, four, and five there. So that's going to be our goal and... Swampy, yeah, very mustardy looking. Here we go. That would be the swamp rat. I'm sorry, the easy tiger. So there she is. Okay, cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and find out what it is we're going to be doing. Resurgent, it's gonna be a 10 point game. Steal victory from the jaws of defeat. Special rules, your ship must be destroyed. <laughs> your ship must be destroyed at least four times in a game. And there was a correction, by the way, uh, in a comment last night. This special rule only happens if you want to be able to get the reward. The goal is 10 points. That's what matters. How we get those 10 points doesn't matter. All of this is optional. So, if that happens, then... Once per game, when your ship would be destroyed, it is not destroyed. Instead, place it on a random spawn point and heal all damage. If it was your turn, you lose any excess movement. Da 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 da. Okay? All right. So that's fun, but again, it's a special rule that is not, it does not preclude us from winning. So, 10 points. That's the ultimate goal. So, 10 points. We will put this bad boy on, proficient prowler, and there we go. So, we're going to just go ahead and put this all the way up there. It's 10 points. We don't need to worry about that again, and we're all set. All right, so there's that. Let me make sure there's nothing else. The base, two, two, two. We have to spend our credits. We'll get that. Good, okay, the base rule book, good. The expansion rule book, event, da, 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 da. the kiln is out there. Oh, the economy board. All right, so let's go over that. So, the economy board, this is going to come into play whenever we buy and sell our resources. So what's going to happen is we need to roll the six-sided die and we will go ahead and start here with the blue and then go clockwise. We need to roll it six times and that's how many we're going to put on there. That's going to be available for purchase whenever we buy, potentially, from a planet. So there are going to be two P resources and I forgive me for not knowing the names. Then the purple is going to be five of those. And I thought this would be good to run through all of the setup together with everybody. Uh, again, was, you know, acting like last night didn't happen so that people, uh, it helps everybody get started as they go along, okay? And we have four Terra. This one I did remember from last night. Okay, then hollow, hollow, or holo, hollow. Four, five, and six, so that bad boy's full. And finally, for the orange, which is S, there's only one. Boop, done. All right. So that now is all set up as well. So there's the economy board. Okay, so now we will, let's see. Uh, choose a, okay, so we're gonna choose a spawn point and we need to outfit our ship. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about outfits a little bit now, and then we'll talk about, uh, you know what, before we talk about the outfits, we probably ought to talk about what it is we're going to be doing in this game here, okay? All right, so our goal is to get 10 fame points. These are the various ways that we can get fame points. The majority, in my opinion, of the way that theoretically we're going to get fame points is through missions. We can also destroy NPCs, so that'll be worth some number of points as well. Trading in cargo, but exploring, getting those exploration tokens is going to be good. Purchasing new ships gets us points. Turn, buying, uh, buying points at 5,000 credits, but that's a lot of money for a point. And as it says, you cannot purchase the final point you need for victory. Keep that in mind. Um, kindness is not going to come into play in the solo game because the other play, the NPCs will never be stranded. Titles, we will hopefully be able to acquire at least one of those, and those are worth some number of victory points. Roll a natural 20, ugh, but if you do, hey, it's a, you get a point, okay? Events come up, may be able to grant, we got three last night, that was good. And finally, relics on a, uh, from a dead planet, if we then bring it into the kiln on near. We can turn it in, possibly, for victory points as well. Now, how do we do that? Well, the game takes place over an indeterminate number of rounds, and each round will follow this series. We will take our turn. We will have multiple things that we'll be able to do on our turn until we are completely done. When we are completely done, our little part of the universe will expand. Uh, we choose where it expands, sort of, and then from there, uh, randomly, we'll put out a tile. Then each of the NPCs in turn order, uh, which is randomly chosen, will start and take their turns. And then at the end of the round, they're going to get some number of victory points, hopefully uh, closer to the low end, as it were. Now, on our turn, our turn is broken up into three different phases. We have an action phase. We're going to take as much or as few of these as we can and or as we want. We'll go over these before we get started. Then, if we end our action phase on a planet or or on the space station kiln, which is on the near, which that, again, is that one right there. <coughs> if we do, then we get a business phase. If we are not either on a planet or on the kiln, we skip this phase. Then we go into a status phase, and then we... Basically, this right here is all of this, and then we go through all of the things there. R rinse and repeat until either we or them collectively here have gotten 10 points, thus ends the game, okay? All right, so that's kind of what it is we're going to be doing. Now, they, the only one that's going to start out on the board, in, on our given board right here, is going to be the enforcer. The enforcer is going to start right there. The enforcer will leave us alone until we are an outlaw, if we become an outlaw. But doesn't mean we, we can't fight them, all right? So let's go ahead and go over then. We have 4,000 credits because we are playing a normal difficulty game. If it were a hard difficulty, which is insane, you would only get 2,000. And if you played the easy, it would be 6,000. But as it is, we'll go ahead and do the normal game. And I want to go ahead and bring in all those. There we go. All right, so now we can outfit our ship. We have 4,000 credits. We do not need to spend all of it, all right? But as it is, we can only move right now once per turn with an impulse of three, meaning we get three movement, okay? But if we want to move more, we can buy an engine. Now, each of these, as you can see, they have a level one, a level two, or a level three. You know it's a level one, two, or three based on the die that you're going to roll, a six-sided, an eight-sided, or a 12-sided die. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 credits. And it must fit entirely and take up cargo hold space. So keep that in mind, okay? In addition to those, you have what are called G... Uh, GTSs, which are basically uh, add-ons that you can put orthogonally adjacent to wherever you put the engine in here. And that will give you a plus two every time you activate an engine up to the max of whatever its number is, six, eight, or 12. So that's gonna be really useful, but that costs a thousand as well. Then there are shields. Well, the bad guys are going to shoot at us and the universe is going to try and kill us. 
So activating shields whenever we can to be able to protect ourselves, again, a level one, level two, level three, rolling a six and eight or 12 sided die respectively and offsetting that amount of damage. Because every time we take damage, we're gonna put a damage cube in each one of these spaces on our ship. When all 11 spots on our hold are filled, we blow up. We'll be able to respawn, but it's not a good thing for us. So shields are good. In addition to that, if we have any outfits that have damage, it's going to degrade the ability of those things by one per uh, damage that's on it. And these little activation spaces that are on each of these, this one, they, this one has three, that has three, this blaster has two, and these missiles have one. That's how many times you can activate it with these markers over here on your ship. So if you have a damage marker on one of those, you cannot activate it. Kind of makes sense, right? So that's gonna be what shields are. In addition to that, there are enviro shields, which are basically going to, if you activate, you put on top of a shield, and it basically, you auto roll whatever the highest number is, so it's a six, an eight, or 12. Nice, but we're not gonna get that to begin with. Then there are blasters. Blasters are going to be offensive weapons, six, eight, and 12 respectively. These are when you're adjacent. Adjacent is the spot directly next to whatever you're trying to shoot and you have line of sight, okay? Line of sight is from the center of a hex to the center of a hex and not across certain borders like these. More on that later. Missiles, and obviously you will roll and that's how much damage you do to the bad guy. Six, eight, or 12, but if the bad guy has shields, they will roll and that will offset from your damage. Pretty simple uh, 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 system in that regard. Then there are missiles. Missiles are long range shots, and you only get one of these per turn, usually. And these are going to be an eight, 12, or 20 sided die roll, do that much damage. Pretty simple in that regard, but the distance, you cannot be adjacent, so this is two to six away with line of sight. Then there are piercers, which are, uh, they, these do more damage. Uh, then there are extra external cargo holds and external armor plating as well. We're not gonna worry about those to start. But those are the outfits that we can buy to begin with, okay? So my gut says what I think we ought to do is if we get a level two engine, which is going to give us up to eight movement there, that is going to cost us 2,000. A level one shield is going to be uh, 1,000. And that leaves us 1,000 in our pocket. Or, or we could buy a GTS, which is going to get us a plus two movement up to the max. So we automatically will always have three movement no matter what. That's an option. Or the MCOM, the mission computer. Normally, whenever we land on any of these mission spaces to be able to draw missions, we're gonna draw three, keep one. We only have room for one mission on our ship. But if we have a mission computer, that allows us to hold two extra mi uh, uh, current missions. So that allows us eight or three missions at any given time. That's really nice. But I kinda like the idea of the level two engine, the level one shield, and then keeping a thousand in our back pocket because repairs. What do y'all think? Y'all decide while I uh, help myself to some tea. Again, I'm not sold on that. This is a collective effort here. It's really not a beast, Greg. It really isn't. All right, y'all agree with, the, with, with that? Um, I, I could be convinced. So here, we will do a level two engine and a level one shield to begin with. So we will start with that for 2,000. We will start with that for 1,000. We need to fit it into our ship. By the way, you can Tetris this however you want. You could do it something, I suppose we ought to show you all that. So there, you could do like this, you could do it like that, whatever. Just once you choose, that's pretty much it. We could do something like this. You can flip these over however you want to do it. So now, that's going to be 3,000. So now the question is, and y'all decide, do we get the MCOMP to allow us to hold uh, an extra two missions? 
do we get a GTS to get uh, a plus two on our uh, engine every time, or or do we save the thousand for repairs? Y'all decide that, and I will move these out of the way, back off screen. There we go. We will move those cards there. There we go. All right. Wow, GTS, everybody thinks. Okay, so GTS it is. We will spend our last thousand. It's burning a hole in our pocket, clearly. And we will get our GTS right there. So now, let's go ahead and figure out. This really is somewhat trivial, because unless they're damaged, we're allowed to rearrange these however we want. So I'm kind of thinking something like this. Um, the only thing to think about here is that allows us room for a level one blaster if we want to get that, or it has a hold of three spots. And this must be adjacent, orthogonally adjacent to our engine. I mean, we could do something like this, but then splitting up our hold doesn't make a lot of sense, I don't think. So I think something like that works pretty well. I feel pretty good about that. If y'all are good with that, we'll go with that, okay? And you're right, as long as it's not damaged, we can always sell level one and level twos for a thousand. Level or tier three uh, outfits, you can sell for 2,000, as long as they're not damaged. If they're damaged, you have to repair. So when we get there, we'll talk about repairing. Just know that repairing our entire ship is only a thousand, but it is a thousand, so keep that in mind, okay? All right. Um, for the NPCs, let me double check. What did I? Oh, there it is. Okay. The NPCs spawn our first, then spawn the NPCs and draw their behavior. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at the actual board out here again, the map. And let's talk about where we spawn. Okay. So possible spawn points. There are, I believe, only two. Right? There's that one, and there's that one. Okay, so things to think about here. Uh, the gate, gates teleport to other gates. Um, right, about that. There's only one gate, so it doesn't, it doesn't really work quite yet. So, kind of useless. Keep that in mind. The planet is going to be good, because remember that the planet, when we finish our turn on a planet, it allows us to do the business phase, which is basically how you're able to repair your ship and everything else. So being next to a planet kind of makes a lot of sense. So I think it's kind of a no brainer to go ahead and spawn there. So there we go. The mustard tiger, the easy tiger is boom on the board. There we go. Okay. I think that's a non option, right? Honestly, okay. We have not gotten our special ship, our special ability. That's a very good point. I forgot about that. All right. So we have the easy tiger. Now we have two options. I'm going to show what these are real quick, and then y'all are going to help me choose. Now, this is going to be random. We are not going to choose this openly. So what are they? The HyperCalc 32 Preemptive Theory Matrix. When you would roll to use an outfit, instead of rolling, you may treat each die as a natural three. Huh. So it guarantees that we won't roll low, but it also guarantees we won't roll high. The other one uh, it, we get to choose, or we'll end up with one of these, is the TAC X. Okay. Immediately after rolling a die, spend an energy and re-roll. That allows you to re-roll any one of your own die rolls. You must take the new result. Um, okay, I lied. We're just going to take that after last night. Nope. Uh, that is streamer's prerogative, is what that is. So there we go. Oh, we're going to need that spot. That's just flat out what we're going to do. Um, it says spend an energy. We don't need that reminder right there, so that's going to go right there. Uh, the end. Okay, um, yeah, we're just taking the TAC-X, just after last night, absolutely, okay? 
Yeah, it was brutal. So, yeah. You know what? And and all of these little things from the uh, from the boards are driving me nuts. Give me one second. That was maddening. I apologize. All right. Even after you vacuum, it doesn't matter. All right. So we have spawned. We are ready to go. Okay. Okay. So now it's the NPCs. Now there is only going to be one NPC that spawns and that is going to be the enforcer. But now what we're going to do is you'll notice that I have these set up where the scoundrel, the merchant and the enforcer is. However, that was just the order they were last night. We're going to randomize this. So, a moment. It's probably not going to be the order that they are in. So, we are going to... Not going to look at the order of these. And we will go there, there, and there. Okay. Okay, so the merchant's in the middle and these two swap spaces. Okay. All right. So, if that's the case, let's go ahead and the enforcer, it, let's go ahead and look at each of these to start with. Patrols, hunts outlaws. Okay. When Kempler 2 is discovered, place the enforcer on it. Okay. So, we're going to do that. However, it on Kempler 2, it's going to spawn in... Normally it would spawn right here, but we're on that space, so it's going to spawn adjacent to it, and we'll go even and odd there. Even, so he's gonna spawn right there. Okay, done, okay? A moment. Okay, good. So, in addition to that, each of the NPCs have four behaviors. So you'll notice those are the four behaviors there, okay? These are going to be random, and anytime they are destroyed, we are going to randomize these again. So now, I'm going to shuffle these up. There we go. So now, choose. It's going to be one, two, three, four, pick a number, okay? And then I will go ahead and get these ready, even though they're not coming out quite yet. There we go. That works, I think. All right, what do we got? Looks like three is the first one. So one, two, three, it'll be the top one of that. So this will go off to the side. Top one, we said, and big game hunter. All right, so let's see if I had this in the right. Nope, I didn't. There we go, that'll work. Okay, so this is going to be their behavior, an enforcer that wants big kills. All right. So they've already spawned, okay, where they are. And then for acquiring a target, the target will be an outlaw if, a t if tier two or higher. And if we're tied, it's going to be us, okay? Now, You'll notice here that it says, if attacked, it'll remember who the last person was that attacked it, whether it's us or the NPCs. They can fight each other, and they do often. Uh, otherwise, the enforcer targets the closest outlaw. If no ship is targeted, the enforcer targets the most distant lawful planet. So the most distant lawful planet, to begin with, is K2. 
Kemplar 2. It says lawful and it's a planet. So basically, it's just going to hang out there until the scoundrel comes out. The scoundrel, and let's go ahead and go ahead and look at the scoundrel real quick. Okay, and let me fix this also. There we go. It's probably going to be more like that. There we go. A moment. All right, there we go. So the scoundrel says, when loath is discovered, place the, con uh, the scoundrel on it. Now, they also, it spawns with a 2,000 bounty on the card, so he's an outlaw always. And uh, there you go. So he's always a bad guy and will always, almost always come after us, okay? Then, coming over, we have the merchant. And again, the merchant, we're going to have to reposition because I moved these a little bit. So there we go. All right, the merchant, uh, it comes out. So place the merchant on the second planet in a trade route to be discovered. So you'll notice that we have Kemplar 2. Uh, oh, you know what? Hold on. Nope. That's Neo Damascus, not Neo Vostok. Sorry. So none of the other planets are out there, so they don't come out. Okay. So the Enforcer is ready to go. We are ready to go. We spawn there. We take our turn. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Let's go over now. So as normal, we start with our turn here. All right. So now, this is going to take a little bit to go over these, but not too terribly long, because we don't have a lot of options to begin with. There we go. That works. All right. So on our action phase, we can do any mix and match of this stuff that we want to. We can do as much of it as we want and as we're able to. So we have four activation markers, so anything that requires an activation, which are going to be using our shields if we need to, as well as engaging our engines. Now, we have two different types of movement here. We have our impulse and we have our halon engine there. Now, for moving, the impulse is a one-time use in a given round. So it just has a base movement of three, boom, done, easy enough. Or our engines, we're able to activate by moving one of the activation markers on there. We will roll an eight-sided die, and because we have a GTS that's adjacent to this, then uh, it's going to add two to it to a maximum of eight. So we're going to basically be able to move three to eight every time we activate our engines, unless it's damaged, minus one per damage on the engine. Okay. So that's pretty simple, but we can activate that up to three times in a given round, provided they're not already used or they're not damaged or anything like that. So that's cool. Now, whenever you are moving, anytime you see something here that is written in red that says minor, that is a minor action that you are allowed to do in the middle of moving. So you can move a couple spots, do these minor actions, and then continue moving. If it doesn't say minor, you gotta stop moving. That's any additional movement is wasted, okay? So attacking, well, there are three different ways to attack. Blasters and missiles, which we've gone over, or ramming. Ramming is pretty simple. Activate your engine, roll an eight, and that's the amount of damage that you're going to inflict. Obviously, you must be adjacent and have line of sight. The downside to ramming, you cannot block any damage that you take. So you're going to inflict the exact same amount of damage. You roll an eight, you're doing eight damage to yourself and you can't block it. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, so, but attacking, we're not gonna mess with the, uh, with the enforcer right yet. We don't need to worry about that. Exploring, that is going to be something that we're going to do. There are two different things, uh, ways to explore. You can scan, safe, and also must not be moving or stop moving, or blind jump, Whee! And uh, you have to be moving for that. All right, so how does exploring work? Well, scanning is pretty simple. You spend one energy on your ship, and you say, I'm going to scan somewhere, and you must be on the edge of the map. So where we are right here, we could scan either this spot this spot or this spot, whatever. We say we scan here, we're going to draw the top and we're going to put it right there. It's that simple, it costs us an energy, done, okay? A blind jump is while we're moving, we then say, hey, we're going to go ahead and move to that space. 
we're going to draw the top. And wherever we came off of, we must match that symbol. And then we end up in that spot at a movement of one. And then, may, good or bad things can happen. And if it's the sun, if it's a star, you immediately die and then you respawn. That's bad. But that's while moving. And that caused the movement point of your moving. So those are the two different ways, and you're only limited by the number of energy and your movement and all that on the edges here. That's it, okay? All right, so uh, collecting tokens, exploration tokens. Well, we've seen those out here. There's one there, there's one there, there's one here. Uh, you keep moving, you hit that spot, you go ahead and grab it, and it's gonna be one of usually a positive thing that's going to happen, and you collect it. And then, remember, uh, you immediately get whatever is on that, but then uh, you can discard two exploration tokens for a point or or 2,000 credits. So keep that in mind. All right? All right. So that is exploring. Missions. Well, uh, missions are drawing out there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map a little bit. In fact, let's move in a little bit with that. So. Any of these spaces right here that you see out there, you can move onto that space. When you move onto that space, you draw three missions, provided you don't have all of your mission slots filled, which right now, since we didn't grab a mission computer, is exactly one. So we don't, but if we were to uh, hit this spot, we may keep moving, but we draw three missions, look at them at the end of the turn, keep one. Pretty simple on that. And notice that's while we're moving, you can continue moving, cool. But as we get missions, there's going to be objectives and completing missions, you must stop movement on those to do those things. Pretty simple. Cargo cubes, we can buy, sell, and if there are any floating in space, uh, because maybe something blew up or possibly we dropped it off, you can just keep on moving, land on the space, collect them and keep on going. But mining, salvage, harvest, quarry, and excavate all will happen out here on the map and ironically there are no spots out there so far to be able to do any of those things so we're not going to talk about that except for the buying and selling if you stop your movement when you go there you can buy and you can buy as many as you want you buy two s the s ones are going to be the orange but note the economy board there's only one so in that case we wouldn't, but you can buy a pair for a thousand credits, so that's spice. And then, if you wish, if you have any in your hold, you can sell any of the halo that you have, and each one you sell is worth a thousand. And then, notice, whenever you trade, you sell all possible cubes in your hold there, a minimum of two, and you get a point as well for doing that. So that's kind of cool. All right, but you have to stop movement, buy and sell. So if we engage our engine, that's going to be the end of our movement on that. And finally, abilities. So whatever our ship is, do that, whatever that might be. Rescue probably isn't going to happen because solo game. And jettison cargo, pretty simple. We have some sh uh, things in our cargo hold. We can just throw them out in space. They just float wherever we dropped them. And that's a free thing to do. So those are all the available things that we can do on our turn. But... If we come out here and we look at where we are, well, really, the only thing we can really do, I, we could have combat, but we're not going to ram them because we don't have any weapons. So you know what? We're going to move. Okay. So now, before we get into moving, we need to actually talk about this. We need to talk about the borders and what all of this stuff really is. Now, we talked about exploring in these, and we're probably going to do a lot of that early on. But as it is... Let's go ahead and talk about planetary borders over here. So every planet out there, and there are a total of two planets out on the board. There is Kemplar 2 here, which is a lawful planet. And then there is Tig, which is a neutral planet. Neutral or green, lawful or blue, and then bad guy planets are red, or outlaw planets are going to be red. So the planetary border on them. You'll notice that if we were to zoom, I think you can see it, you see that little blue dotted line right there. That's the entrance into the planet. If you go through that as a lawful ship, which we start lawful, we can just mosey on in through there, no harm, no foul. However, 
you can, if you so desire, you can try and cross a planetary border. If you do so, on a 1 to 10, you roll a 20-sided die. On a 1 to 10, you fail. And you take damage. How much damage? Depends on what you roll. You roll a 10, you take 10 damage. Our hold has 11. That would be block off 11 spots. That's bad. But if you roll an 11 to 17, you get to move in. But now you're an outlaw because you broke the law. You didn't go through the front door. You broke in through the side over here. Then that's going to be an outlaw, which means the uh, enforcer is going to be targeting us. And we're going to have a bounty on our heads. So there's that. But if we roll an 18 to 20, we don't. We break the law, but we don't get caught. So cops didn't see it, I didn't do it. We just get to make it through. But good luck with that, rolling that 20-sided die. So that's gonna be planetary borders, and it goes for uh, neutral as well. When we get to an outlaw one, it's a little bit different because even if we go through the front door, we have been seen cavorting with outlaws. We become an outlaw just for going through the front door on an outlaw planet. All right, gates. We'll talk about those when a second one comes out. It's teleport from gate to gate. There's only one. We're not going to worry about that. Red borders like this, um, you go boom, die. So in other words, they're kind of impassable. Sort of. You can commit suicide by moving in there, but you die immediately. And there's a sun, which is one. The entire thing is just a red border. Don't. So if you blind jump into the sun, you die. So that's bad. But there is near. Uh, I'm sorry. There is the kiln. Whenever we dock with the kiln, the kiln will, will roll a 1d6 and it will move around. The end. So that's what this spot is over here. Then there is a comet. This comet spot right here, and it says right there that when you hit this line, whenever you enter a space that has that line on it, it's going to roll a 1d6 and it's going to move clockwise. No matter. So if we were to enter it here, Right, so we somehow, uh, we wouldn't be able to. Let's say we enter it here. We're coming in from this direction. We enter it there. It's going to roll a one through six. One, two, three, four, five. If, if it's a six and it's on the same spot where we tried to enter it, we go boom, we die. Outside of that, it can pass over us. It can pass by us. It can stop short, no harm, no foul. And then we continue moving. Easy enough. However, these ice asteroid spots that are out here, Okay, anything that's bordered like this, these are, these are bad, bad areas. One through 10, we're gonna roll a 20-sided die when we enter it. Uh, one through 10, uh, we take ice damage. Uh, ice damage expands orthogonally at the end of our turn, that's bad. 11 through 20, nothing happens. Okay, easy enough. Cool, cool. Um, and if we go to this spot, we can pick up the exploration token, immediately get whatever it is, easy enough. Mission spot, pretty self-explanatory. All right, the only other spot that's out here right now that we need to talk about is the brink, which is an anomaly. So these are gravity spots. So anytime we hit any of these spots all the way around up to right there, the moment we enter that, we're going, so let's say we hit, we come in through here and we enter this spot here. We're gonna roll a 1d6 and whatever we roll, and let's say we had three movement left over. We hit this and we roll a two. It's going to suck us in one, two, and now we have three movement from this spot there. We can move against the arrow, we can move with the arrow, we can leave, we can enter the, the uh, um, oh good lord, the nebula, if we want in the center. We'll talk about that in a minute. The important thing to note is on these spaces right here, if you get off of that space and then re-enter it, or come off and re-enter any other space, the moment you enter it back again, you then have to roll a 1d6 and then move automatically that many spaces. If it were to push you off, pushing you off is follow that and it pushes you into whatever the bad thing is that's going to happen. When that happens, you then cross that border into a nebula and now you are off of the gravity path, but now you have to roll for the nebula. Nebulas can be good, can be bad, all right? You, we're going to roll, a, these pink borders are nebula. so if we were to, say, enter this spot and we roll, say, a six, one, two, three, four, five, it pushed us off, so okay. A one through ten hurts us on our energy, so we lose that much energy. If we don't have enough energy to take, we're then going to lose for each energy we can't pay. These are going to become, become disarmed down here. 
Okay? Pretty simple on that. If we have no energy and we have no markers, we are stranded. What does that mean? We can't use any of this stuff, which means we have an impulse of three for our engine. That's bad. So that is rolling a one through 10. You're gonna take that much energy damage. 11 through 20, nothing happens. And when you leave a nebula, you do not have to roll again. It's only when entering the nebula. And while we're in there, we can grab that exploration token. So that's everything that's out there. Okay? All right. So, with all that said, let's begin the game. First off, place your bets. Are we going to hit 10 points first, or are the NPCs going to hit 10 points? And over under on Glory to Rome's, there's a lot of randomness in this. Four and a half. I'm going to use the board today. Know that. I'm going to make a point to use the board. So four and a half is the over under. Place your bets. Okay? Yeah, and, and obviously you can move around inside the nebula without rolling again. Right. Okay? All right. So with that said, because we are down here at the so southern part of the map, I went ahead and moved that. So... We are here. I think we go ahead and scan. Let's reset our energy. I think we scan for this zone right there. Okay, so a scan is when we're not moving. Okay, so it's going to cost us one energy to do so. We're going to grab the top one and it's going to go right there. Now, with that said, it's going to be the arrow that has to match up because that's where we're saying. Okay, that's the side we're coming from. Okay, all right, so the arrow, the comet just died. There we go. It is Doravin 5, and this is really, really bad for us. That sucks. Huh. Huh. Ah, well, the good news is it's a neutral planet, as you all can see, right? And the reason this sucks is because the merchant's going to come out, and this is going to be super quick movement between here and Kemplar 2, and he's just going to make pa paths, and it's going to get them points really, really quick and really easy. So that just kind of sucked. But I mentioned there's randomness in this game. Okay. So you'll notice that not all the symbols match up. Some might, but this is the only one that matters. Now, we just discovered that, so a couple of things are going to have to happen. First off, we need to put an exploration token over on it, okay? So we have one that comes right there. You'll notice that we can buy Terra, terra uh, green cubes here for a thousand for every two. There are four available to purchase. And we can sell... Crypto, I think, is is what the C is. Uh, cyber. Sorry, it's cyber. It says below. Um, so we And we have another place for missions. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, that cost us one energy. But as soon as that happens, the merchant is now going to spawn. Okay. Because place the merchant on the second planet in the trade route to be disco discovered. So we discovered Kempler 2. Those are not discovered. So Dorvane 5 is. So the merchant is now going to come into play, and now I need y'all to pick a number one through four for the behavior of the merchant. Okay? So, it's going to spawn right there. Okay? Three it is. All right, so one, two on top, and three will be the back one. So that, let me put that one over here, okay. So it's the top one we said, so what is that going to be? He's a collector. They are collectors, I should say. So there we go, okay. All right, so buy space on the next trade route uh, planet, okay. So they're going to try and move to the target if arrived, buy a cargo if possible, and they have three or more cargo above, they get an extra point. Okay, all right. So, he's spawned, we're done with that. They don't take their turn yet because it's our turn. But that cost us one energy, so here is, and we didn't use our engine, sorry. 
There we go. So now we are still out here. What do we do? We are still by the edge, so we could scan right here if we want, or, or it's a neutral planet. I'm of the mind that we scan while we're here by the edge and not have to use it, uh, our, uh, waste an engine, but I'm thinking what we do is we don't have a place currently, as you see, we can sell Halo here and we can sell Cyber there, but we can get Terra and we can get uh, Spice. So those don't really work for us right now. So, and we have no money. <laughs> so there's that too. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of things we could do. We could fly around to try and get this exploration token and then maybe fly up here and run a risk of possibly uh, getting some ice damage, but that's okay. If we did, we could go there and then we could try and fly back here and then end up on the mission spot there. So I'm thinking we scan, we fly around, get those two exploration tokens, and then we come back, get that exploration token, and finish our turn there with a mission. What do y'all think? Okay, y'all y'all are on board with scanning? Okay, cool. So what we're going to do then, we will spend one more energy for that, and we are going to move space. And we are scanning right here, and we'll match up with the circle space. We could, because technically we're right in between, so which one do y'all wanna match up with? Let's go that route. The Y or the circle space. And it's going to be the top one, so it's going to be that. Okay? And Elk brings up a good point. We could try to discover more planets on the trade route further away so he doesn't make as many points quick, okay? That's a good point. And while we're over here, we could scan to be able to, yeah, I like that idea. Good call. All right, circle space it is. Oh, you know what? That's actually a really good point. We are on the sector with the circle, so it's gotta be that one. If we were on that sector, it would be that symbol. That's a fair point, thank you. So circle, well, ooh, ooh, we have Farron's call. We needed this last night, but, okay. So it's an anomaly. So you know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and read it face up. So notice there are two different gravity paths, right? Roll a D12 and we're going to move it on that. And then when we land on this one, roll a six and move on the path. But there are two exploration tokens. But the problem is with this one, you're going to die when you do so. So keep that in mind. So we need two exploration tokens. Let me try and do this face down, not looking. Okay, so we have one there and we have one there. A lot of anomalies coming out today. Okay. All right, so there, that's really not so bad. Okay, that's okay. All right, so now, I think, now we move. Now note, we can always move on to these things, right? That's free movement, but again, if we do, it's the other thing is roll a D12, and we could explore down around this, but I think we stick with the plan. I think we come up around this way. So if we're going to do that, then we need to engage one of our engines, or we could use our impulse, which is four movement, or three movement, I think we hold off on that. So let's go ahead and engage one of our engines, doesn't matter which one. So there, we're gonna roll a D8 for that. Okay, so we rolled an eight. Now the GTS would normally give us a plus two, but it's only up to the maximum of our engine. There's no overdrive, it's not turbocharged. So it doesn't mean a nine or a 10, it just means, well, it's wasted in that case. That's okay. I really don't mind that rolling an eight in this case. So we are already have rolled better than we did entirely last night, okay? And uh, by the way, the merchant can get sucked up by the, uh, by the anomaly if it were to move on to it. 
but as the way things are laid out, they always move the most direct path, so they probably won't, but. So we move eight. Okay, so one, two, here, let's do it this way instead of moving it yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pick that bad boy up. And then I say we go seven right there, and then we go eight and stop there. I like that idea. So we'll go six there for sure. One, two, three, four, oh, wait, we're here. One, two, three, four, five, sorry. And we immediately get, hey, we get an ice damage, yay. And by yay, I mean, really? All right, so we have an ice damage. Uh, it always grows orthogonally unless we're on a planet, then it just melts. So we're going to want to make sure that we get onto a planet. But right now, it just blocks that cargo hold. Okay. Oh, that's it. That, my, thank you, thank you. I moved the wrong ship. You're right. I was going to say, I thought it was six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. On the positive note is we get to take the token at least, and we get to hold on to it. Two of those is a point. Hmm. So there's that. So that's six. We will go ahead and move seven. We get to keep moving because, <coughs> excuse me, collecting a token is a minor, so we get to continue moving, right? So that's seven. Well, we now moved on to This is kind of where the main part of this is going to be. So how about we just save it there? All right. So the comment now says, uh, on entering, roll a d6 and then move the comment on its path. So it's just going to move. We're, we get to observe it from far away. That's OK. It moves six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. OK. No harm, no foul. That's OK. So we had six, seven, nothing happens here, and now we're going to enter the ice asteroid spot. All right, so the ice asteroid spot says, for ice damage, we're gonna roll a 20-sided die, one to 10, we take that much damage, 11 to 20, nothing. Seventeen, nothing, awesome. So okay, no harm, no foul but we get the exploration token. And what is it? Hey, I believe that is we fill up our energy. A moment while I double check that. That is immediately refill your energy meter to maximum. Hey, that's okay. We only use two of it, but hey, we'll take it. And it's a second token. So we can turn that in at any point for 2000 credits or a point. Hey. We'll take that, all right? That'll work. All right. So that is eight movement. Now, that is all of our movement that we have for our engine that's over here. But we still have two activations and we have our impulse over there. So what is it we want to do? Well, okay, here, if, we were to move onto this spot or this spot, we then roll the comet, and if we move here, as long as it doesn't roll a one, we don't die. If we move here, as long as it doesn't roll a, a, a two, we don't die, it just moves past us. We could move there, and then it will move, and then we could come over here to scan. That's an option, okay? Um, hmm, so... I think we head over and do some scanning over on this area. What do y'all think? Now we can move where the comet is also, and it will just pass us by. So there's that, that's an, um, or we could move up this way up to Neo Vostok area up there. Um, but keep in mind, we have, two engine movement, and we have our impulse. So we could theoretically use our impulse to move three, and if we did, then we could go one, two, three. 
or better yet, one, two, three, and we could add a tile there. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter which one there. Um, personally, I think we ought to move over here. So we go one, two with our impulse and stop. Then we could scan there. Then we could use an engine to come here. Mm. Uh, that's tricky. I don't know. Let's see. Um, yeah, if we move to this space, we can scan there and we can scan there with the impulse engine. I like that idea. Let's do that. Uh, oh, or, or, hold on. Oh, here's the other thing to keep in mind. If we were to hit this spot and keep moving also, we can hit this on the way back, potentially depending on what we roll to be able to pick a, a, up a mission. And it does not preclude us from doing that as well, which means we draw three in each spot and keep one. So it's more options. So I think we do that. So we're going to move where the comet is, but we can't stop where anything is because obviously it takes up the whole thing. But we're going to move on there and then we're going to roll for the comet movement because we get back onto the path. Comet's going to move three. One, two, and three, moving that way. And we had moved one, two, using our impulse engine. So that is now used, and we are going to stop right there. Okay? So there we go. That is a good point that those spots might help the merchant. Hmm. 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 That is a really good point. And we know Loth is one of them, but they are not trying to go to Loth. You know what? I'm going to make a command decision for us. We were here, so instead of moving there, we'll go one two, and once, once we're on the path, it doesn't re ag, uh, activate, three, and we're going to go that symbol right there. It doesn't hurt us, and nothing was revealed, so I think we're okay. That was our impulse engine, and we're done. So now we're gonna spend one en energy, so we were at eight again, and we will grab here, and that's going to be the Y symbol. And hey, it's a good thing we did. That's Neo Damascus. That is going to be one of the merchant's ships. And what, what did I say? That's the Y. Oh, wow. So that matches up right there. So now all of a sudden, maybe we don't need to go back to Kemplar 2. Well, how you doing? All righty. So we need to grab an exploration token. We need to put that right there. Okay. So that worked out pretty well. Then what do we have? We have a mission spot here. That is where we can sell spice. Now, you notice here on Kemplar 2, we can buy spice right here. We can sell it there. So we get two for a thousand, sell each one for a thousand. And here we can buy plasma, which really doesn't help us because there's nothing out there with plasma, but that's okay. Okay. So now that we have that out there, now that might change what we're going to choose to do. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and look at the merchant. So if we look out here, we have Doravin 5, we have Kemplar 2, and we have Neo Damascus. And he will go in that order. Okay? So, buy space on the next trade route planet. Well, it started on Dorian 5. So, Azure is not out. So he's going to go to Kemplar 2, then he'll go to Neo Damascus, Lunar, Lunari's not out, so then he will come back to Doravin 5, rinse and repeat, doing all of that, okay? And Martha brings up a good point also, that if we had not scanned, then only the Enforcer just would have basically hung out, right? 
So there's that. All right, so let's go ahead and since we're hanging out up in this area, let's go ahead and set that up for a map because I never know how the map is going to be, right? We don't know how this is going to build out. Well, we have two engine activations still. Um, we can always pick up that exploration token right here and keep on moving. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six away. And we know we're going to roll at least a three. So I think we roll and then we see where we're going to move from there. Okay. So, all right. All right, so we will activate an engine again. We will roll a D8. Star trekking across the universe. That's a four plus a two, so that is going to be six movement. All right. Well, one, let's take a look. Six movement. Now, again, we could do a straight shot, but eh, we really don't want to become an outlaw, I don't think. Okay. And also, keep in mind where this it counts as a planet as well, just as an option, right? And this is where we can sell ember, but we can't get ember yet, which are the white resources. There's no place to get them, but one, two, three, four, five, six. That's on the edge. We could always scan there, and we could scan there, and then we have one movement left. I think that's what we do. I think we come over to the Explorer token and then we scan a couple times and then we see what we roll from there for the last movement. I think that's pretty good. And, and the other thing to keep in mind is um, the, the scoundrel will not come after us if we're on a planet and so there's that, right? Dave really wants us to blind jump. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we can't, uh, we need one movement to blind jump. So, unfortunately, we would be at six. So, let's go ahead and move, though. So, we will go onto that spot right there. And what did we get? Hey, we fill up our energy again. So, we go from seven to eight. And that's a third token. Okay, there. Correct. Martha brings up a good point. If we scan, it's almost guaranteed that the scoundrel will spawn and generate points for the NPC. Okay. So maybe we don't scan. Just because we can doesn't mean we have to. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if we want to land on a planet, if we want to land on a planet, we need to roll high unless we want to become an outlaw. And the fact that we don't have any, any offensive weapons tells me we probably don't want to become an outlaw yet. So we would need to move, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven onto the planet, eight to be able to get a mission. So we need to roll a six or higher to land there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need a five or higher to land on uh, TIG. And finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here to be able to dock with the kiln. So we need a five or higher basically is what we're saying. However, don't forget y'all, we have eight energy now, right? And we have the Tech X. Immediately after rolling a die, spend an energy and re-roll. Okay, so we roll until we hit what we want. Oh, good point. Tig would bring us onto the anomaly. Okay, so we roll. Uh, we, we, we have eight re-rolls. Keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and engage our engine. And uh, here we go. That's a four, plus the two is six. That's not enough. Whoop. Spend an energy and re-roll. Nope. 
Okay, that's good. Seven plus the two is a max of eight. That'll do, pig. That'll do. So if that's the case, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. In through the front door and stop on the mission space. So that means we get to draw three missions. One, two, three. And we'll go over those here momentarily. In fact, we'll go over them here momentarily. So now we have our shields, we have all that stuff, but all of these other things, we're, we're pretty much done there, okay? Oh. Now where, hold on. Need to accept the roll and then flip the card. Oh, to track that it's been used. Ah! It does say any one of your own die rolls. That's a fair point. It did say, okay. So allow me to re... Let's, let's roll this back. I just realized that. That's... It does say any one. I misread that. Okay, so we have to accept the one roll. Fair enough. Well, fair enough. Put those back. We didn't look at them. And these are forceps, not tweezers. So we have three movement then up here. Fair point. After use, place the card face down until refreshed. Well small font down here in the bottom. Thank you. Good call. It'd be way too out. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. So that's been used. So we'll turn that face over. There we go. All right. So we have three movement. <laughs> Y'all want to? Oh, and that's a good point also, Bill. That is actually a really, really good point. Okay. After you get these, then you have the, the choice after you reveal them or, and you immediately get them to turn them in for either money or points. That's actually a really good point. The rules do call that out. I just forgot. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and turn in two of these out of the game permanently, and that's going to give us 2,000 credits. That way we have some cash. That is a really good point. And I forgot you can't save that stuff up. Good call on that. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, good call. All right, so we have three movement. We could, we could blind jump. And maybe it ends up in a good spot for us. Maybe not. What do y'all want to do? Legitimately. I realize some of you sadists out there um, are like, oh, blind jump no matter what, right? Okay, all right. Now, we could try and go through the shield, but I really, really don't like that idea because we become an outlaw, right? Um, what was, somebody roll it back. What was the first number that we rolled? I think the first number we rolled, wasn't it a four? Yeah, I think we have six movement. I think, I think you're right. We rolled a four plus with our GTS, I think we have a total of six movement. So if we have six, let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't get us on the planet, and that's dead opposite. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to get us onto the planet. We could blind jump. Okay, it was a four. So, no, we'll keep it that way. We'll, we'll play it straight. So we have a six. That's our movement. All right, so now, what do y'all want us to do? We could either move to the, to the mouth, but if we blind jump, it is possible that the scoundrel comes out and that's more points for the NPC. I'd prefer not. I prefer not to. But if you sickos want me to blind jump, now's the time to do it. We're not gonna go through the shield. We would go and we would end up right here. We would stop there is my opinion. So we either go there and then on our next turn, 
Huh. Yeah, I don't, ah, this is a tough call. Dave brings up a good point, too. We could move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even if it pushes us into the, uh, uh, the nebula, we'd be able to pick that up. That would give us 2,000 more, plus anything that's on there. And then we're only 1,000 away from getting an upgraded ship because upgraded ships are 5,000. I like that idea. I like that idea. Dave, let's do it. So that's going to be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There. Oops. Try that again. So that moves it to there. Then we're going to have to roll... The six-sided for the gravity well on there, on the anomaly. That's okay. And that's a two, so we will move two per the gravity well. One, two, and that's where we end our turn. Okay. So, because we ended our turn not on a planet and not on the space station, in that case, we then skip the business phase here, so we go into the status phase. Now, unfortunately, we do have some freeze damage, and freeze damage is now going to expand orthogonally. So, we take a look at our ship. It will cover up one of our shield spots and one of our cargo spots. It's cold in space. Ice. Okay? All right. All right, so that is the freeze. Oh, you, oh God, you know what we totally forgot? I believe we start with, in the solo, a moment. Um, actually, during the basic setup, hold on. Do we, or no, I'm making that up. I'm thinking last game, we had so many, uh, so many titles and everything come out. Um, we remove those, good, start, good. No, we don't, never mind. Okay, so uh, there's no fame. We're not, there are no titles or events that get drawn. Uh, refresh uh, any, any markers, so, and then arm our markers. So our impulse is going to refresh. Okay, so now for each of these uh, armed markers that are out there, if we want to enable them, or arm them, each one's going to cost us an energy. One, two, three, so why don't we? We have the energy to use. Any that we chose not to, let's say we chose just two, it then comes off and goes into the disarmed area, but as it is, we have the energy, it makes sense, let's go ahead and use it. And we've used our reroll. Uh, by the way, this gets refreshed. Right here, part of the refresh step right there okay so that then we'll go there and we're ready to rock and roll so that is the end of our turn right there so now what's going to happen uh system expanse choose an unexplored location choose so we get to choose it with the most adjacent sectors so that clearly is going to be that spot up there So this, let's go ahead since there's not going to be a lot going on down south for a while. We'll go ahead and use that there and from there. That'll work there. Let's go ahead and bring it right there. That'll work. Okay, so we're going to choose this one and we will choose the circle. We could choose the Y, we could choose the T, but let's go ahead and choose the circle. And that is Burning Horse. This is a giant nebula. And you'll notice now we have a harvest space right here. So when you go onto that space, 
Uh, it's the end. If you choose to harvest, you roll a 20 sided die, one to 10, you lose energy, just like what happens when you cross the border of a nebula. But if you roll an 11 to 20, you get to pick up one halo. And you can do that as many times as possible as you are able to do so. So, and you have cargo spots to hold. Okay, pretty simple on that. And we said it's going to be the circle. So that will go right there. There is an exploration token. There. Uh, spawn point and a mission spot on that as well. Okay. So that was there. And if any NPCs, so loaf has not come out. So let's recount real quick because we're allowed to do this. We started with five tiles out there. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. So either this one or the one below it is going to be loath. Keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now the NPCs take their turns in order, left to right, provided that they've spawned, and then they're going to get some amount of victory points potentially, okay? All right, so the only two that are out there on the board are the enforcer and the merchant. And we will do this left to right, so the enforcer will go first, okay? I always thought it was on the harvest spot, Elk of Legend. Yeah, you have to be on that spot. All right, so the enforcer, so their behavior, so acquire target, move, and then attack. So acquire the target, let's go through this. So the target, hey you, come here. <laughs> Hi. There's <laughs> a J Rex sighting. Hi. 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 Mm. <laughs> All right. So, sorry. M uh, that, that was a morale boost right there. All right. So, here we go. So, acquire a target. Uh, they want to go after an outlaw if there's a tier two outlaw. Well, there aren't any because we're not an outlaw and the merchant's not an outlaw. So, okay. Then they're going to closest out. No. If no ship is targeted, the enforcer targets the most distant lawful planet. Okay, so lawful planet there, neutral, neutral, neutral. That's it. So he's going to come over to that. Okay, move. Enforcer, this says moves up to six spaces towards the target. All right, or two to six if targeting a ship. Well, now we need to actually come over and look for the first time at the NPC stats card. So this says, and we're looking at the enforcer, will move up to six spots, right? If they were to attack, they're going to roll a D12, uh, which is a missile, so they're going to be two to six away. Uh, when they get attacked, they'll roll a D8 for defense, and to kill it, they have to take 12 damage. Damage does carry over, okay? All right, so that said, um, this one's pretty simple. It's going to move there. Okay, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, towards the target. Well, they're there at the law at the lawful planet now. Okay. Then attack. Uh, the behavior says move to target if in range attack, and then re well, they're they're there. Ends movement. Um, okay, so there's nothing to attack, so he's done. That's it. Ah. Okay. Cool. And you know what? While we're here. We got the merchant. Let's go and bust out the merchant. So the merchant says, um, moves eight spaces. Well, in our case, it's nine, actually, per the NPC uh, side card A. So it's going to be up to nine on the cell space on the next planet. But here, by space on the next trade route planet, well, it spawned here, so it's going to Kemplar 2. Um, move to target, if arrived, buy a cargo if possible. And if three or more cargo, gets a point. Okay, so nine spots. Okay, so nine. It will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there you go. So, if arrived, buy a cargo if possible.
it can. So it's going to purchase one spice. So we take a look over here. There is exactly one spice over here on the board. So this spice, it's going to buy, but now it's empty. So we're gonna put a thousand credits on that board because now spice is in demand. So anybody that sells spice will get an extra thousand credits wherever they sell it to. Okay, that makes sense? All right, so that is going to go over onto their card like so. Okay, so if arrived, buy a cargo. Okay, done. So he's done, that's it. And then the scoundrel is not available, so they are not going to take their turn. So then they've done all of that. We are not playing with the sell sword. I chose not to today. And then we're gonna roll a D20 for the NPCs. So roll a D20 and plus two for every cube and for every uh, credit, thousand credits that they have. Well, as it is, they have one cube, so we're going to add two onto that. They are not behind any victory points, so no adding for that. And then X for uh, from the merchant. And X is, uh, if three or more, add plus one fame point for the NPC, so not that. So we're going to add two onto their roll. So we're gonna roll their D 20. So that's seven. Seven says they score one point. Okay, so they are in the lead with one point now. And now you'll note that an event is going to happen. So we are going to grab the top events. And now here's something I need to double check and maybe the peanut gallery can help me with is with events, do you draw them immediately? But the problem is there is a draw titles and events step at the end of our turn, okay? Um, let me double check if they take off the board. It does say buy. It specifically said buy and you buy from that board. So let me double check on the economy board. The rules do say that whenever a player wants to purchase cubes from a buy space, the cubes come from the economy board. I don't know if the rules aren't super clear on that. Hmm. If the NPC triggers an event, you do it immediately. Okay, thanks, Auntie. Oh, okay, they don't buy, okay, thank you, David. All right, so per David, that cube technically would come just from the supply. It's, it's thematic then just. So if that's the case, that will go back out there. Okay, no harm, no foul. So, thank you. So we have an event that's gonna come into play. So we have infestation, that sounds good. Uh, chewing on the power cables. While this card is in play, the player who drew this card, that's the NPC. Uh, is now the host. Place this card next to their ship mat. Okay. Space rats. Whenever the host rolls a one, they must take one unblockable damage. Contaminate. Once per turn, whenever the host is adjacent to another ship, even if it's not their turn, immediately give this card to that ship. They're now the host. And that card, this leaves a uh, play when the host is destroyed. Well, who do we give it to? Because the NPCs are technically, technically players in that regard. I don't know. You know, because they are collective, you're welcome for the slush, Jess. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, hmm. I would say odd even. 
That's odd. So, the enforcer gets the infestation card. Yeah, we'll just put it right there for him. Okay, that'll work. I think that, that seems fair. I damn sure didn't draw it because they're the ones that got it. So, yeah, that seems like the right thing to do. All right, so now it becomes our turn again. There. And we are not going to include the scoundrel in that because they're not even, they couldn't have done it. They're not in play yet. Is it? You're right. Ice, um, hmm. Ice damage is blockable with shields, but the fact that we got it from an exploration token, I would argue that's probably not, not blockable. Oh, good, good to know, Trevor. Thank you. Oh. So they actually rolled a five. It still didn't impact things. So the oh, that's actually really good, Trevor. So if y'all don't see, Trevor's saying reading now that the plus two to the NPC roll at the end of the round is per thousand credits. It's only on credits collected this round, not cumulative. And plus two for the cubes is cubes are removed from the map by us jettisoning cargo or if our ship is destroyed. That's important to note. And Trevor says it is blockable. So our ice damage, we could have blocked by using one of our uh, markers over here. We did have a fourth one. We had that used, that used, that used. So if that's the case, we could have blocked that ice damage. We would have blocked, so a one to six we would have rolled. So we would have blocked the damage. It just would have cost us an extra energy to take that back. So actually, if that's the case, then we don't have any ice damage. Because no matter what we rolled, we're going to roll at least a one. So it blocks that amount of damage. So fair enough. Thank you, Trevor. All right. No, it never died, but I figure I would do it again anyway. So it's our turn. We are way up there on the brink. I say we, uh, we go in and we... Do we use our impulse? Does it matter? What are we trying to do? Oh, other one. There we go. I'll get it right yet. So we're up there. We want to get that exploration token. We'll have to cross the nebula and possibly take some energy damage, which is, which is risky. So no, I think we actually engage our engines to start. I think so. They might as well use an engine to get there. That makes sense to me instead of then we always have our impulse to be able to use as well, potentially. What do you all think on that? I'm all ears or eyes as it were. We do not have to gravity roll because we are currently on the line, so we can freely move on that. I'm waiting to see what y'all are choosing here.
And we are allowed to use our shields to block for nebula, so keep that in mind. All right. I think we do engage our engine for this, so we will. There, we're going to roll the eight-sided die. So that's going to be a two plus two for that is going to be a total of four. And that is actually a really good point. We re-rolled two other times. And we did not get the energy back for that. Keep that in mind uh, when we misuse the re-roll. Because we rolled uh, originally something low, then we rolled the four and kept it, but we actually forgot. So we re-rolled a one and then we re-rolled again, so that's two more energy we should have gotten back. So good call on that. So. Our engine, we're moving four for that. I think it's that one. Okay, there we go. So moving four, that's gonna be one to move into the nebula. The nebula, one through 10, we take energy damage, but we have shields. And, the, uh, and 11 through 20, we take no damage. So here we go. 19, that'll do. That'll do. So we get the token. We get the exploration token. So that was one of our three movement. I'm sorry, one of our four movement. Hey, we get a spice immediately. That does not come from the exploration board or from the uh, economy board there. But hey, we now have spice. And you know what? We're going to put it right there. So there we go. And we now have two tokens, two exploration tokens. Let's go ahead and get 2,000 for that. So we're at 4,000 now. Take my word for it. We're at 2,000 or 4,000, sorry. So that was one of our four movement. We have three movement left. And remember, leaving the nebula does not cause us to uh, re-roll. So we can freely leave it. However, if we roll, if we move anywhere out here or here, we're going to get back onto the gravity. So we would probably have to go one, two to be able to get out there. Uh, And we have spice. Where can we sell? Oh, we could sell spice over here, and that's another thousand. Yeah. Okay, so that was one. You know what? Two, three. We'll go on to that space. We have to roll a six for the gravity. That's okay. I think that's all right. So we move two, one, two, and now we have one more movement left over from that, and we'll go and get off of there. There, that's our first, there. Um, I think what we should do is we come over here we keep moving, and we end up ending our turn right there so we can sell the spice. And that's a 1,000 right there. Or? We still have two energy, or two movement engagements of our inner of our ship and an impulse this might be a bit ambitious oh no we can't because the merchants on that space damn it never mind um yeah i think that's what we do it's going much better Alyssa. yeah i think the other question is we could scan up here but i really I, we got a 50 50 shot on whether or not the scoundrel comes out the scoundrel still might come out because the game's automatically going to put a tile out. 
but if we scan here and it doesn't come out, then it definitely will during the end of our turn. So no, let's no scanning. So let's go ahead and engage a second engine and we'll roll a 1D6 or a 1D8 again. That's a four, one, two, three, four. That's good enough. That's fine. We could use our reroll to save an engine, which saves an energy, but we're on the planet, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter, so we're not gonna bother. So we'll just take that, so that's gonna be a total of four movement. So the four movement then will be one, two, three, four. We'll go and grab the three missions that we tried to grab last time. One, two, three, done. Oh, by the way, we're gonna put that there because we need that spot, that's right. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and engage our impulse at that point. There's no reason to use our last energy to then we get three movement to go over there and we will <sighs> now here's the thing if we go on to that space we can sell and get a thousand and that will give us five thousand to be able to buy a new ship but but the only reason I'm hesitant is for the trade, if we had a second, we would be able to get a point for it. But I don't think we wait on that. I think so. So let, we moved on to that space up there. So we will then sell our spice that we have here. So we will sell this. We get a thousand for that. There. This will go out onto the board there. But. Here's the way this works. Sort of it works that way, but not exactly. The planet wants this. So basically what it does was the cube that we just sold it, it's actually going to consume this. So this is going to go back into the supply. Why? Because then we look at the planet Neo Damascus and it actually produces uh, plasma. So that's what it's going to add onto the economy board, not what we sold it. What we sold it, it consumes, but it's going to spit out that many plasma. So we come back over to the fame, and the plasma will then come here, and that will then make that available onto the board like so. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully. All right. So we are now done with our... Action phase. Now, we still have stuff we could have done over here, but no, we're good standing, uh, ending on the planet, okay? But at the end of, um, let me actually look. Is it at the end of our action turn or at the end of our entire turn? Um, after your turn ends. Okay, so we don't look at the missions yet but we are in the business phase now. So recharge energy, so you always get full energy on the planet. We have no damage, so we don't need to do that. We can buy and sell outfits, but or we can rearrange our hold as long as nothing's damaged. If it's damaged, it needs to fix first. And repairing, remember, is a thousand for the entire ship. Buy a new ship or buy points. So we could buy a point for 5,000 or we could buy a new ship. And buying a new ship uh, gets us a point as well. So yeah, how about we buy a new ship, y'all? So there's the 5,000. That's what exploring gets us. So now we are already doing considerably better than we did last game. Now here's the cool thing about the way this works is not only do we keep the ability and we keep all of our outfits, but the ship itself goes away and now we have to choose what ship we're going to buy. And notice, you have to buy a tier two. 
you must go one to two, two to three, unless there is an event or something, some rule breaker. But as it is, so here we go. Way more energy and way more hold spaces, and which means it can take more damage. So we have the Krembler, the Lone Drifter, the Bitter Karma, <laughs> The Mock Horror, isn't that very Firefly-ish right there? By the way, I could not remember Firefly yesterday, but there you go. Mock Horror. Gaiden, right? That's like Ninja Gaiden, old video game. But probably not this one that holds, uh, I, not, and not a ton of energy. Probably not the Gaiden. Occam's Razor. The Skimmer. People from Vegas built this one, apparently. The Void Wasp. That one's pretty cool. I like that one. Okay. I like that it only has one wing. And then, there we go. So, uh, what say y'all? I mean, the Bitter Karma is kind of the one. I, I really like that one. But y'all decide. It's up to y'all. Well, Bitter Karma seems to be the one that y'all are, are, are going with. Um, I mean, it's a ton of energy. It's a huge hold. The impulse is lower, though. Keep that in mind. Okay? The impulse is only two, so there's the offset to that. But y'all decide. And while y'all are deciding, I'm going to move all this stuff off. I'm excited we get a new ship already. Well done, us. So the Easy Tiger is retired. Hey, Phil. Seems, seems, uh, seems this seems to be the one. Okay. So we have the Bitter Karma, which after last night, I think I agree. That's kind of a appropriate thing. A little bitter. Um, I'm looking, uh, here we go. So there is the Bitter Karma. Mini, okay. All right, so. There we go. So, our mustardy ship did its job. And now, the bitter karma. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So now we need to actually get all of our stuff over here set up for it. And we get a new ability, which I will get to here in a minute. So shields, off to the side there, yeah, that, that seems good. There, and that's got to be adjacent. So we still have room for a missile um, or potentially a blaster up there. Or, let's see, if we were to do something like that, and what if we did this? We don't have room for the medium-sized blaster this way, but I feel like this gives us pretty good flexibility for everything else. I don't know, which way? Do you like it this way or the way I had it? And, remember, we keep that ability, but now, oh, it's a tier two. Bitter karma. By the way, are we supposed to be able to choose or is it random? Whenever you buy a new ship. I don't know the answer to that, so I'm looking. It really doesn't say, does it? Oh, by the way, we need to actually read the uh, stuff on the back. 
Uh, you get to choose, Trevor says. There's enough randomness in the game. Fair enough. Um, hold on. Before we do that, we need to read about bitter karma. Here we go. Backstory. Mere words cannot express the joy you feel as you trade in your first ship for the Horizon 5. She has a strong stature and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost any ship in the galaxy. As you make your first orbit, you notice how smoothly she accelerates and how quickly she responds to your commands. You have definitely moved up in the galaxy. All right. I think I like it that way. I didn't see anybody... Um, ooh, leaving the front open for ice damage. That's actually a damn good point. Yeah, okay. I like that. That way, ice damage only expands one. That's actually a really good point. So, okay. All right, well, let's take a look at what our options are here. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, EMP Burst. Knock out enemy ship systems. Target all adjacent ships to which you have line of sight. As an action, spend two energy and roll a d20. Nothing happens. On, you know what? I realized that. Give me a minute. Let's do it this way instead of like that. Let's bring it here. It's easier for you all to see. There we go. That's not really great against the NPCs because they don't have energy. The damage is nice, but eh, not really great against NPCs. Our other option is Dimension 10. When your ship respawns, so if we die, you start with zero damage and choose your spawn point. At the start of your turn, you can self-destruct your ship, respawn immediately, and continue your turn normally. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I like that. It's basically a free teleport at the start of our turn. However, it's at the start of your turn and you lose any missions whenever you uh, self oh, whenever you die. So that's the that's the downside of dying is any uh any missions that you have and any and all cargo cubes you have are dropped. But a bounty is removed, so we could become outlaws temporarily. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think so. That's kind of fun. Let's go with uh, Dimension 10. And it gets rid and it gets rid of all of our damage. I mean, that seems like a hell of a good idea. So the EMP burst is gone. Okay. All right, so that is now the end of our turn. Okay? All right. But now we have our missions, remember. We uh we ended up landing on that space as well. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at the, what our missions are. We'll do these one at a time. All right, so we have a thief mission. Track down and acquire items. So target the player to our right. Our, the player to our right is the enforcer. Player to our left is the scoundrel. Okay, so this is the enforcer. Fly adjacent to the target ship and make a theft attempt. Okay. One to five, not good. Oh my. Um, and then we get to steal money, three, four, or five thousand, and then we have to deliver goods to the Expedior gate, which actually is right there. Check that. It is right, it is that spot right there. That's pretty good. 
I like that. That seems like a pretty good mission to start. Then we have a transport. Fly to a mission spot in any gate. All right, so the same spot that we just pointed to on the Expedor gate. Um, place X amount of halo in your hold and place double the damage on this card. Okay. Okay. The player on your left, which in our case right now is the merchant, but eventually will be the scoundrel. As an action, when adjacent, give the target that amount of halo and you jettison any excess. Gain 2,000 for each cargo cube that was not jettisoned. After you load, if you discard this mission without completing it, though, take all damage on this card as unblockable and you have a, a bounty. I think the other one's better. I just think the other one's just better. And then finally, we have counterfeit. Uh, fly to a mission spot on any dead world. Well, this just in, we've discovered no dead world so far. But the player to our right would be the Enforcer. As an action, when adjacent to the Enforcer, declare how you will split 4,000 reward and the target must pick Launder or Snitch. You roll, so, huh, interesting. So they will, will have to randomize how that works and then you see what happens there. Split the fourth. No, I think the first mission. I think we go with the first mission, which is the thief. I really like that. All right. So that's what we're going to go with. So that will go there. The other two go to the bottom of the deck. All right. Now that is the end of our turn. So now... Choose an unexplored location with the most adjacent sectors. Well, everything, it is all the way around. So where are we? Uh, we are way over here. And so the enforcer will target us if we are tier two. Otherwise, it'll just hang out around lawful planets. The scoundrel possibly will come after us. So where do we want to put the scoundrel? Do we want to put the scoundrel up here, potentially? Because Loth might come out. So I'm thinking we go up here. But then again, we're going to have to end up coming over here for the Expeditor Gate. Because we're going to end up having to come here and then make it there. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, and we get a fame point. Boop, because we bought a ship. We're on the board. Good call. Uh, yeah, I think we go ahead and put it up there. Above the anomaly. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of fun. I like that a lot. So I think we do it straight up there. Okay. So a moment we are going to completely reposition the map, all right? Because the angle of what it is isn't really working for us. So hold on. I think that's, that's okay. There we go. Okay, sort of. We can always move that. That's not the end of the world. There we go. So, if we put it here, they might end up having to come through the brink, the anomaly there, or, or we could have it here to where he's got to go through that anomaly too. So it's going to have to go off of an edge. So it would either be this edge here or that edge. And, yeah. No, the Enforcer won't go after him because not a Tier 2. Hmm. 
Where do we put it? So there's that anomaly, and there's this one, and if we put it there, he still has a path to come through here. I don't know, what do y'all think? The merchant route is going to be, he's on Kemplar 2, so he's gonna go, so from here, going to come over to here. Um, nope, sorry, to there. And then from here, we'll come to there. So from there to there to there right now. That's, that's the route that he has. They ignore nebula rolls, but they don't ignore anomalies. And they also will avoid planetary gates, too. I kind of like the idea of having them over here. Even at, I mean... But then again, there's a really good chance that he comes here, but that's not really going to hurt him, whereas it could here. Yeah, we're going to go there. Uh, we'll do the square spot. Okay, well, it's moot, so it's going to be the next one. There we go. So we have a debris field. So the debris, here, I'll flip it over for you all this way here, says that on this salvage spot, we can get a C, which is, it's not crypto, it's, um, what was the C? Cyber, right there. But one to three, you blow up and die. And on all these spots, one to three, you die, four on up is safe, okay? So we said that was gonna be the square, and the square is right there. All right, so the scoundrel, still not coming out. That's awesome for us. But we do have an exploration token that, there, so let's see. One there. And good, so we know the next one is going to be loath. Okay, cool. And hey, now everything fits. That'll work. All right, so that was System Expanse. Sorry, that took a little bit, and now the NPC will take their turns left or right. So the Enforcer will go. So the Enforcer, whenever they roll a one, they take an unblockable damage. That's always nice. Uh, there's still nobody that they're after, so they will move to um, the most distant lawful planet. Which, there's still no other lawful planets, are there? He's not, he's done. He's just going to hang out right there. Because that's the only lawful planet out there. Neutral, neutral, neutral. And that's it. Okay. So he's done. Whee! The merchant, the merchant is going to move nine spaces towards uh, the buy spot, the next one. All right. So the buy spot is going to be nine. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, boom, done. So it goes from Kemplar 2. Oh, wait, 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 I was wrong. I'm sorry, Kemplar 2. I had it to Neo Damascus. So let me back that up. It's going to go nine the other way. Sorry. So he is there. Okay. So nine, and it's the most direct route. So, correct me if I'm wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I don't believe they will avoid comets. Let me look for NPC movement. Let me make sure. Double checking. 
They will avoid asteroid fields, debris fields, planetary shields, and stars. Nebula do not affect NPCs, and they can use gates. They can't scan or take blind jumps. And uh, most direct. So I would argue that they do trigger comets. And I'm just double checking. Nope, not NPCs, as called out in the comet movement. All right, so never mind. So starting from there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's less fun. Seven, eight, nine. And he will stop there, I believe. Move to target if arrived by a cargo, and he doesn't, so the merchant is now done. The scoundrel is not in play. And now here. These are for anything that they've acquired out on the board or this turn, which are zero, so they're just straight up going to roll a 20-sided die and get whatever is shown on that. What is that? 16. They're going to get two fame points. Wah, wah. One, two. They're mostly harmless. Shout out to... Uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy there. Um, but we are going to get a title. So we're going to draw one of those. So we will draw the type, top title. It's a Viking. Take him out the old-fashioned way. To claim this title, and it's worth one fame point, be the first player to, draw, to destroy another ship by ramming. Once claimed, this title grants, you take three less damage when ramming another ship. So death by ramming, get a point. Okay, so that'll come out over here and be available to be claimed. Okay. All right. Oh, good call. We purchase cyber there, or we can salvage cyber there, and we can sell it there, because cash. That's good. All right, so that was the NPC's turn. It's now our turn. Okay, so what the hell are we trying to do now? Let me back up one thing. So the enforcer, right here, contaminate. Once per turn, whenever the host is adjacent to another ship, even if it's not their turn, well, the merchant had to come through there, so um, this is now the merchant's problem. So the merchant got that. So if we go adjacent to the merchant, we're now going to uh, have space rats. Which means anytime we roll a one, we take an unblockable damage. So something to keep in mind. So we have no money, but we got this really big fancy ship. Okay? But we also have our mission. Our mission, as a reminder, target the player to our right, which is the enforcer. So getting to Kemplar 2 get adjacent to him, and then make a beeline for the Expeditor gate. So what does that look like? We are here. We need to get adjacent to there, and we need to end up there, and we're going to get up to 5,000, provided we roll. But remember, we always, we have one re-roll, so if we roll like crap, there's that. Okay? So I think that ought to be priority number one. And then once we finish that, we then theoretically can go and get some exploration tokens. We can get another mission, all of that. So that uh, go, go gadget uh, engine. So there we go. Let's do it. Uh, that's a seven and plus R2, so max of eight. That'll do, pig. That'll do. All right. Now, hitting this spot does nothing for us right now because we already have all of our mission slots full. So we have eight movement. So let's look. Unless we want to come across the border, we're going to have to get next to it and we're going to get space rats. So be it. One, two, three. We're allowed to go through the space, remember. Four. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could avoid it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and end up there and avoid the comet altogether. I think we ought to do that. Space is big. You can always move through spots. It doesn't move uh, the kiln unless we dock with it. That's the only time it moves, so that's fine. But we get space rats. So we have an infestation. So don't worry, we're gonna be giving it back to the enforcer here momentarily when we also steal from them. So there's that. So we have space rats. That was one engine engaged. And unfortunately, our impulse is only two now. So we need three to be able to get up adjacent. So unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to hit our engine a second time and probably waste it. That sucks. But tis what it is. So we engage the engine again. Uh, that's gonna be another eight. Seven plus two, max of eight. Uh, but let's go in one, two, three, four, right there and stop. We are now adjacent to the enforcer, which is the player on our right. So therefore, first off, here you go. You can, uh, you can go ahead and have those space rats back, first off, so there's that. And now, player on our right, done, okay. Fly adjacent to the ship and make a thief attempt. But first, some theme. A woman with bright blue hair greets you at the landing platform. Captain, I have need of your services. A tech firm is about to unveil a new product. You need to acquire it before that happens. Okay, so we need to roll a d20. And uh, remember, we do have a re-roll. So we would like high. A very, very high number would be great. That's an eight. Eight would be 3,000. Peanut gallery, is 3,000 enough as far as you're concerned? Have a good one, Elk. Is 3,000 enough? Or do we use our reroll? Y'all decide. Dun, 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 dun. First three answers. Yeah, right? Trouble with tribbles or the trouble with space rats, whatever. All right, looks like we're playing the safe route. We're taking the 3K. So we steal some 3K action, okay? So we are going to put the 3K on the card there, and then deliver it to that spot on the expeditor gate. Okay. Uh, we have our impulse of two, keep that in mind. We are currently here, so we need to move one, two, three, four spots. So we're going to make it there no matter what this turn. I would prefer to roll high. Well, as long as we roll a two, we're okay. And then... Yeah, we're gonna finish in space, aren't we? We might be able to make it onto that, though. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go ahead, engage our last engine. Well. We're rolling really well here, okay? So that eight, now here's the thing. Before we make any decisions, okay, we have to stop on that spot to complete our mission. But we have a movement of eight. I'm just curious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, noob. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah! I mean, right? Why don't we go uh, to Burning Horse? Enjoy some live music. I mean, we can we can come here, pick that up, and then go. And even if we roll terribly, right? If we roll a one through ten, we have enough energy to withhold to, to withstand it. I think we and we have shields. Yeah, there's no reason not to. Right? Yeah, I think we do. So here we go. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and now we need to roll one D twenty. Since we're up here, let's go ahead for the, set that one up. Okay, 1d20 I said, so. That's nine damage. Well, okay, that or check that, that's nine energy. Nay, nay I say, nay. Why you might ask? Because we have a shield, so. Let's go ahead and use our shield for the first time. We still have an activation left. Now, if we had multiple activations still, we could actually trigger that twice simultaneously or as two separate things. Six and one half dozen of the other. See what I did there? We would roll six twice and they would be cumulative. But as it is, we now have nine energy minus, oh, Oh, hold on. We do have our reroll. That's a good point. Hold on. Oh, good call. Good call. Good call. I agree. All right. So before we do that, that's a fair point. Okay. We have our reroll. That's going to cost us one energy. So we will use our reroll. And I'm just going to tap it. And now we'll flip it over. It's fine. All right. So. Okay. Three energy. I'm okay. We could take the three energy hit, so one, two, three, dropping us to eight, but why? So there, so now, we will roll our shield. Oh, we block four, we take no energy hit. Okay? All right, so well done, us. Our shields have come in handy. Well done, well done. So now, We get some spice. Okay. And again, it doesn't come from here since we didn't buy it. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it up here. That way, if we take any ice damage, it's out of the way from that. Okay. All right. So, again, we were here. So, one, two, three, four. That's five. Six, seven, stop. When we stop... We now, uh, check that, actually, let's call it out this way, mission. So it's uh, complete. There we go. So therefore, there, we are at that location. We now get the 3,000. And that, it doesn't give us, uh, check that, it does give us one fame point in addition. So, whoop. And we're just going to set that off to the side. We'll do like this to show that we got it for that. There we go. And we have 3,000 credits. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have nothing here, but we still have our impulse if we want to use it. There's really no reason to do so because we can't get anywhere that we want to be. Amex, this is not. We already got that. Uh, we're not going to be able to get anywhere. So honestly, I don't see a reason why we, we're just going to forego our, our uh, impulse. I, yeah, I, I think we don't. I hear you. We could have, while we were in the nebula, gone ahead and tried to harvest. But 
but there's no place that we can sell two at a time at. So I disagree. I, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. So that's it. We don't get a business phase because we're not on a planet. We have no freeze damage. There is nothing to claim. We don't draw anything. Refresh. Uh, we refresh here. And then we're going to spend one, two, three, four energy. One, two, three, four to get all four of our tokens back. There, and that will flip back over. Oh, you know what? Eh. Hmm. Here's it. Okay. Here's one thing that I will allow y'all to think about. We do have our impulse if we wanted to use it. We could go one, two, and we could scan. We know that's going to be loath. Do we want to do that? The only reason I'm thinking maybe is we know that Loth is going to come out. Loth is going to come out right here. We can't do anything about that. So we could make Loth come out up here, and then we could have another tile come out here, which could be good for us. Because Loth is coming out come hell or high water, because it's the sixth tile. We know it is, and so it's going to, if we, if we don't care that it's going to, then we could go there and get closer. Yeah. Yeah, I think we do explore. So, slight rollback. It's not a big deal. But we will use our impulse to move one, two there. And then we have energy for days. We have seven energy even after we have pulled those back. I'm a little ahead of ourselves. But we'll spend one there. And hey, shocker, it's going to be loath. There, there we go. So that is on the straight side without a symbol. So it's going to be right there. It's going to get an exploration token there. And then the outlaw, Josie Wales. That'll work. So the scoundrel is going to now come out right there. And the cool thing about this is where that is, he has to come around the other way. He can't come through the planetary way. Uh, he will avoid the border. So at least there's that. So the scoundrel, now pick a number one through four because we are going to have to have a behavior for him. Okay? So one through four for these, and it'll be one, two, three, four. Seems y'all are really enjoying this. I'm having a blast. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. So hopefully y'all are as well. All right, so what do we got? Uh, two, two, twos beat it. The twos beat the fours. All right, so let's see what the scoundrel's going to do. Uh, that was, I said two, right? So it'll be a top card, so that card goes away. And it'll be the bottom, and the bottom will be hateful. He is hateful. All right, a scoundrel that really hates you. Move to the target if in range attack. So he's just going to always target us until we kill him and he becomes a different uh, personality. So the scoundrel spawns with a 2,000 bounty on it. Okay. So he's worth two grand. Okay. All right. So the scoundrel is going to move six 
and then if in range, attack. So he has to be directly adjacent to us because he only has a blaster. Now, how do I know all of this? Because this card up here, so the scoundrel moves six, he's going to have a, a D12 blaster. He has a shield and 10 damage kills him. All right, so he's moving six. He has to be directly adjacent to us. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You are not directly adjacent to us. He's looking at us, but uh, nope. So sorry. Oh, by the way, uh, we are here. There we go. So he is not adjacent. He has line of sight because it goes directly down the edge of the planetary uh, border, but he's not directly adjacent because blaster, not missiles. So there's that. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, remember, is uh, as the Viking, for damage, we could theoretically ram him, but all the damage that we inflict on him, remember, is unblockable to us. He can still block. So there's that. All right, so he has now spawned because we scanned. That is now the end of our turn because we scanned. We've already done all of this stuff uh, ahead of time. So now... Choose an unexplored location and a new tile is going to come out. Well, it's going to come out where there are the fewest amount or the most edges. So it's going to come out right there and it'll be on the little T spot because that has the most edges of it. So it'll be this one and... Oh, we have a Lunari, which this is going to come into play for a couple of reasons. One, this is now a merchant... Uh, this is another merchant planet, and this is uh, where the, the Enforcer is going to come after. Uh, he's going to patrol here as well. So we said the plus one, and the plus one is right there. So um, there you go. We can sell plasma, and we can buy cyber on that. Okay? All right. So the T, that will go right there. All right. Uh, we need another exploration token, so. There we go. All right. So that is done. So that was here, and now the NPCs all take their turns. So the Enforcer starts out. And the Enforcer has, an, uh, has space rats, but not a big deal. So uh, the target is an outlaw if tier two, but there's not. So we go through this. So if no ship is targeted, there isn't because the outlaw is a tier one for the NPC. So he is not going to go after the NPC, the scoundrel, unfortunately, until uh, he's dead. But that's all right. So he's just going to fly around. I'm going to target the most distant lawful planet. I'm going to move six spaces. So he's going to come over to in front of there. And uh, he will avoid debris fields if at all possible. So he'll go the other way. So six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And he is done. They are done. But the merchant now. So let's see here. He was on his way to Neo Damascus from Kemplar 2. He will continue to be, and then he will go out to the new planet that we just did. Then he will go to Dorian 5. Then he will go to Kemplar 2. So in that order. So looking at this, so from where he is, they are, we'll go Neo Damascus to Lunari to Dorian 5 to Kemplar 2 to Neo Damascus. And that's going to be his route. Okay? No, yeah, maybe you're right. Hold on. Maybe you're right about the Enforcer. So the target's going to be an outlaw if it's here too. And here... So let me, let me get this right. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. For the target.
When an NPC first enters play, randomly draw behavior, then randomly determine which behavior it right. NPC will follow those rules when taking a turn instead of its normal rules. So I would argue that that is the rule. The target is always going to be an outlaw if tier two. And if not, then it'll be uh, just patrolling between the planets. That's how I read that. Ah, uh, there is a comma there. That's a fair point. Outlaw. And then if tier two, the player, if possible. Okay, that's a fair point. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Okay, so let's move him back. So good news, he's coming after him. All right, so he's moving six, and he has a missile, which is two to six, if he has line of sight. They can use gates, and he can move through gates. So six. One, two, three, four, five, six would give him line of sight. I think that's what he would do. So he can move six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. There is line of sight from the center of that to the center of that, and he is two to six away. All right. So behavior, move to target. If in range, attack and then repeat. So he's going to attack twice per this. All right, so he's gonna attack twice. So now we need to figure out what dice they are going to roll between them. So we look at this. The enforcer is gonna roll a d12 for missiles and the scoundrel will roll a d6, but only uh, once each, right? They'll eat, they'll, so they'll roll twice each. Um, but the first time, figure out the difference and then add that much damage. If at any point there's 10 damage, the scoundrel is D-E-D -E -D, dead. All right, so let's do it. So it's gonna be a 12 and a six that are rolled. So it's going to be those two. So here we go. Uh, five offense, six defense. Uh, that'd be a, a, the missile missed. Okay, so then Roll again, because second time. Uh, five damage, two blocked, takes three damage. Sorry about that, enforcer. So three damage onto the scoundrel, not dead. So there we go, there's the three damage. If he gets 10, done. So now the enforcer is done. Now the merchant will move. So hold on, wait. Oh, okay. Well, read what Fab just said. Enforcer does not target the scoundrel, only tier two outlaws. So what I originally said, okay. The stuff on the normal card is ignored. I checked this myself a week ago. I, I assume I'm BGG. Uh, does not move. And this is intended. Okay, so if I'm understanding this then, what that means is everything that's on here is moot. Instead, just going to do that. Okay, well, so not even going to patrol the planets. Just going to hang out. So if that was the case, technically you would have been there the whole time, but so be it. So the damage goes away. Okay. So the only way he's going to attack then is if we become an outlaw because we have a tier two ship. Okay. All right. Fab, we will defer to you. I'm good with this. So the collector now is on their way to Neo Damascus and they're going to move nine onto the buy spot. Moved everything, so we'll do it that way. There we go. All right, so up to nine under the buy spot, but clearly not one, two, three, boom, done. Okay. So now that that's done, we then look, move to target if arrived, buy a cargo. And going to buy one, the P is that one, so there. If three or more cargo is aboard, 
uh, they get an extra point, but it's not, so done. So now they are there, they're going to go on towards the new planet Lunari on the next turn. Okay, okay. So the, the infor or yeah, the scoundrel hates us. So they're gonna move, and if in range, attack us. Okay. Boop, they're in range. Here we go. All right, so they, uh, the scoundrel, is a D12 blaster. There. And for us, we have two activations on the shields. Now, it's important to note here that we are on the defense. So we could do that to go ahead and block, I believe. And because we are on the defense, even though we are not active, we can, if we want, reset these, even though it's not on our turn, to bring those back. Correct me if I'm wrong, peanut gallery, but I believe that's the case. So he is rolling a D12, and we are rolling a D6 twice. There's an event that can bring out the T2 outlaw. Okay, well, that's fair. All right, so provided I am right on that, I believe we can use both, we can activate the shield twice, I believe. Uh, well, we don't need to. Although you have to declare that first. So I would say we did, and if possible, so he did six damage, we block six damage. And then we're going to reset one, two, and those will come back. He missed. And he only gets a single attack, so he is done. All right, so now they're done. So uh, two for every cube that they have picked up this turn, no. Uh, money acquired this turn, no. Um, they are not behind and no extra points for the merchant, so just straight up roll. A two. No points for them. Our turn. All right. Well, that worked out pretty well. As tempted as I am to ram him to try and kill him to get the point, I don't think it's worth it to us. I don't think so. Oh, and that should be activated. Well, we need missions. We have no mission, but we do have cargo. If we self-destruct with Dimension 10, we would lose our cargo. I would prefer to not. And there was a, clear, uh, a change in the rules in the expansion game for uh, trading. You do not need to sell all your cargo cubes to gain the point. Instead, you must sell at least two cubes and all the cubes in your hold at that location that that will, location will buy. So it has to be at least two and it's gotta be the same. So, yeah. Um, the hell are we gonna try and do this turn? So the interesting thing to note I mean we are right by loath and we can always self destruct right next turn I'm just thinking we could go there and sell the cube for a thousand once we cross that threshold either there or across the boundary here then we're gonna become an outlaw. We could sell that, we could get this. Getting that would give us a point, which would be our third point, or 2,000. And the tier three ships are 8,000 apiece, that would give us 5,000. <clears> and then we have other stuff that we could do. 
Like what, though? I'm just saying because Loth is close, right? Um, getting a mission doesn't make sense because if we're going to then self-destruct at the beginning of the next turn, we would lose the mission. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. There's only one spice cube, so going there doesn't make sense. We can't sell Holo because it's full. There's only one spice to buy. Buying cyber here, and then we could sell it over on Dorian 5, which we could buy it here, sell it there. You don't lose your outfits. You only lose your cargo and you lose your missions. Huh. I mean, we could come over here and salvage. We do have our reroll. We could come over here. That would be 2,000 to get four and then sell it there for 4,000 and a point. And that would almost get us a ship. So 2,000, 4,000, that'd be at five. Or we could try and salvage five here. If we try and salvage five, rolling four through 20, uh, we have room on our ship. We then could come over here and sell it and buy a tier three ship, which gives us another point and another point that would give us four points. That's an idea. And the other exploration token also gives us another thousand. So we could go, I kind of like the, I mean, here's an idea. Do we just self-destruct right now and then spawn right here? And then we can use our impulse to get there. And then we just have to move to here and we can get a mission there as well. Kind of like that idea. I think we use the Dimension 10 to do that. Provided we don't roll horrible, we would be okay there. And then we could pick this up for another 2,000. That would be five. So we would actually only need three of these then. Or we could get like five, and then that would allow us to buy some uh, a blaster or missiles as well. I like that idea. I think that's what we're going to do. So. We're going to self-destruct. Dimension 10. So, uh, at the start of your turn, you may self-destruct your ship, respawn immediately, and continue with your turn normally. You cannot collect cargo cubes the same turn you jettison them. Okay. When your ship respawns, you start with zero damage, and you choose your spawn point. Okay, seems like a good idea. So this will actually kaboom. We oh, by the way, uh, your ship must be destroyed at least four times. There's one if we want the special ability. So that's one. Feel like we ought to keep a counter. So that'll be one up there. And we will respawn right there. 
And the cube, when we died, just floats out in space right there. I like the idea. Yeah. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and use our impulse here to move two. One, two. And here, okay, we have a one reroll for one energy, but you know what? I think we, uh, we just roll four through 20. And we can do this as many times as we want. And this is technically called, uh, what, it's not, a, what's it called? It's a salvaging. There you go. Have to be on the space in at least one free hold. For each action, roll the d20, and because it's salvage, one to three you blow up, but we have a re-roll. And four through 20, um, we succeed and, and, and we, get a, uh, we get a cyber. All right, well, let's just succeed, four through 20. That's a nine, so there's one cyber. And cyber is the purple cubes. Oh God, we can only sell one. Y'all see that? That, ah, there's a flaw in the plan. And I would argue, uh, ah, Pook, we, we, we can reroll thanks to our rapid tactical recalculation. I, I would argue that we could. Yeah, so hold on. So hold on. Let's, let's look at this. The fact that we can only sell one, but we can buy a bunch. So a moment here. Hold on. All right, it's going to cost us extra movement, and as long as we don't roll terrible, we'll be okay. So instead of spawning there, so never mind, let's back it up. We spawn there instead. We will not use our impulse, and instead we will use an engine. Yeah, this actually works out all right. If all goes well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then impulse to there. And we would get a mission, we would get that and there, and we could buy. That'll work. I think that's okay. And yeah, I guess, to, uh, yeah, no. So we'll do that. So we will engage an engine. And that's an eight. So seven plus two, max of eight. We're rolling well on that. So that's an eight. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, get mission cards. Six, seven, eight, pick that up, and then impulse over to there to buy. So we get a Terra. There. Okay. We used our impulse in one engine to get there. Then we'll go ahead and spend 2,000 to buy four of the, uh, oh God, I can never remember what it's called. Cyber, should be crypto, but I digress. One, two, three, four, five. And when we do that, we will discard both of these for 2,000. And then if we sell that, that's going to be 4,000. That's seven. This is going to get tricky.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. All right, so we did hit the mission space. So we'll get these at the end of the turn. One, two, three, four. No, we can't stop there now. That's the only problem. All right, let's roll and see what happens. All right, we'll engage our second engine. That's a seven, five plus two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we would need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need a four, or one, two, three, four, roll, five, roll, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, we need a three. We're gonna we're gonna try that. Yeah, there you go. So one, two, three, four. We have three movement left, but we need to roll on that. One to three, we bro blow up, but keep in mind. We also have a reroll. Safe. Nothing happens. We have then two movement after that. Roll again. Safe. We then get that. Oh, our impulse is plus five this turn, but we've already used it, so is that wasted? Immediately gain up to five movement. Check that. So that'll work. And we'll hold on to that. So we get five. We have two left over still. So we actually have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we stop. And we still have an engine left. Oh, apparently, uh, good thing we didn't, our reroll we didn't have. Have a good one, Jonathan. Oh, so, Apuk said, or uh, Bill Bass says, Apuk, uh, from page 15 of the rule book concerning ship destruction from salvage failure. This cannot be prevented with shield outfits or special abilities. Good thing we just rolled, right? Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Leave it at that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to sell. We can sell up to five cyber. We have four. So we will sell all four of those. These will then go onto that board, but not really, because they consume those. And instead, there will be four Terra, but only two of them actually get produced. So there. And that's going to be 4,000. So we'll call that a 5,000 there. And because we sold all possible cubes in our hold that we had of that type, we get a point for that. Somebody's closer there. So we're at 7,000. We need 1,000 more. We have an engine. What can we do? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not worth it. Hmm. Well, what the hell do we do then, y'all? Yeah, uh, tier three, we could get... We could get a missile. Huh. 
Oh, we could sell the GTS and be able to get a sh Oh, I like that. All right. I like where your head's at. Good call. Where is, where is Templar? Um, oh, you mean this one here? Um, it's too far away. Yeah, I like the idea of selling the GTS. All right, so if that's the case, we're done with our main phase here. So we'll go into the business phase and we will go ahead and sell our GTS outfit for a thousand. So we will sell this for a thousand. That gives us 8,000. Let's go and buy a ship. So we get a tier three. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, well, let's take a look at our ship, shall we? Okay. So we have the Cold Phoenix here. A lot of energy and a hold of 15, impulse of three. Okay. Nightshade. It doesn't have a massive amount of hold, but it's really not that far off. And I mean, that ha that's a massive missile right there, right? If we wanted to do something like that down the road. So there's that. There's a uh, man of constant sorrow. Whew. Wow. She's a beaut. But keep that in mind. Impulse of one. Karyak, impulse of two, a little bit trickier positioning, but if we like the artwork on it, why not move to the gate space? Yeah, I guess we could. So yeah, that's fine. We can. Manchester, I don't know if that's city or United, but okay. I mean... Wow, if you want to load up with some cargo, she's the one. Impulse is crap, but whoo, you can load her down for bear. Slow leak, very similar. I mean, look at that energy, right? Whoo. All right, so what's it going to be? I mean, I can make a case. Slow leak is better for hauling than long haul. It has one less, but it's a better impulse and it has way more energy, right? Although I will say long haul looks cool. So there's that. Um, yeah, Abpook says, Cole Phoenix is great if you want to go full on murder, which works great with Dimension 10. Manchester, if you want to go trade, so. Well, it looks like slow leak, although Cold Phoenix is close. Powers and mission, I don't think we do. Again, this isn't my copy, this is cons. So, looks like slow leak. Sounds to be the one that people are saying. So we're going to go with slow leak. All right. So a moment. We need to get, so that's going to be 8,000. Can't believe we've gotten this much money in this game. That's awesome. She's slow, but she'll get us there. All right. Say goodbye to Bitter Karma. You've done your... You've done your work. Might as well flip that over as well because that's going to be good. Eh. 
And big missile up there potentially, right? Just looking at that. Oh, he said, look at the powers first. Ah, all right. Well, that's a fair point. I guess we didn't look at that. So let's look at slow leaks. All right. So slow leak. There we go. As an action, only if your sector lacks a star, spend five energy, then in any order you choose, move each ship in your sector directly towards the center space as far as possible. Ships move through borders must roll as if they move there, but they do not receive bounty. You get credit for any ships that are destroyed. That'd be a lot more fun if it were uh, in a star too. If the next space on the ship's path to the center is occupied, it stops moving, okay. Then shockwave, target all adjacent ships to which you have line of sight, adjacent being directly next to it. Spend three energy and roll. One to four, nothing. Damage and are pushed back away from you. Three, five, and seven damage. Ooh, and oh, that, oh, that shockwave is nasty. Oh, that, that's pretty good. So there's that. Um, the other one that it looked like we people were talking about was Cold Phoenix. So teleport, basically. And termination helix. As a minor action, spend two energy to place your ship adjacent to another ship in your sector, which is really good if you want to get uh, to basically a teleport for a blaster. I'm really okay with that. No, I think I think we stick with the shockwave and we stick with our slow leak. I like that idea. I'm good with that. Cost three energy, but it's worth it, I think. All right. So, okay. Oh shoot, I forgot to look at our ship. All right, let's see what she says. Backstory. She's a unique ship, to put it nicely, but she stole your heart at first glance. The dealer told you 80% of her is 100% to another ship, and that's that. You're not quite sure what he meant, but the ship is grand. You keep finding new passages and secret compartments filled with long ago, long forgotten gizmos and small treasures. You could live a lifetime and not know all her secrets. She's got some tricks up her sleeve, and that suits a maverick such as yourself. And she comes with a pool table, a high blast repel system, and unknown. All right. So let's see. Got that. There. There. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think we'll do it like that. All right. And we have the GTS, G, uh, GTS as well right there if we want.
That also works too, doesn't it? Yeah, that works. Yeah, let's leave it like that. That'll work. Okay. Ah, okay, so apparently we do have the powers of expansion. There we go. All right, cool. So that is those cards done. Now we still get our missions that we stop by to grab right there. So let's take a look. Oh, and before I forget yet again, a point for getting our ship also, which means we're going to get an event, which... The event happens first, so before we get the those. All right, so the event, it's a power crisis. Uh, worlds are no longer protected. While this card's in play, all planetary shields are deactivated. Place a damage on this card at the end of the round. So that lasts for three rounds. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. All right. So technically that would happen at the end of the round. So, okay, not yet. We need to upgrade our ship. That is not her. I'm looking. Where is she? Huh. Maybe that is her. Hold on. Yeah, that is her. All right. So there she is. Okay. Gish. Not that impressive looking, but it's not all about looks. Ruins part of Shockwave. That's true. That's a fair point, but tis what it is. All right, so let's see. Let's take a look. Reacher, all of that is done. We're not going to sell any of those. No damage. Rearrange, right? Okay, so we're done with the business now here. Claim fame, no. The event just happened. Uh, refresh, don't need to worry, and arm markers, don't need to worry. Okay, so that's the end of our turn. So now we will get the events. Here we go. All right, Smuggler. Pick up Contravan and Vortex 86. Vortex 86 is not available right now, but it's a good way to get a whole bunch of money, potentially. Okay, so, but again, Vortex 86, not out there. Next, Burning Horse is, so pick up Contraband. When you enter the destination planet, you must make a detection roll, okay? And that is in Neo Damascus. So that's not really too bad because Burning Horse is here, Neo Damascus is there, and planetary borders are down for what it's worth. So, okay. So that is... For, uh, that is one, two sectors away, so it's worth 4,000. Okay, I'd say that one's better. Have, some, have fun, Alyssa. And finally, so that's the leader in the clubhouse, we have an arms dealer. Uh, pick up a blaster outfit. Payment is determined by the outfit, uh, which one we buy. Well, we have no money is the problem. And it has to go to the ruins of Drelmorth, Drelmoth, and uh, that's not discovered yet. So um, I guess we're going to choose that one. So we'll just put that there in our area. Those will get buried. That's the end of our turn. So now there will be... We're gonna system expanse, which this is actually going to go up there. So that will be, uh, we'll do the T right there. And Tigris Gate. 
Now, the Tigress gate is a defective gate, okay? Or a damage gate, as you can see. So, a 1 to 19 place on closest rolls spawn point. So, you randomly teleport somewhere, and then 20 you choose. But the first player to use it gets a point. So, keep that in mind, okay? All right. So I said the T, so that'll go right there. So a random teleport, not terrible for a point. That doesn't seem too bad. Okay. All right, uh, so now the NPCs go. All right, so what do we have for the Enforcer? The Enforcer, outlaw if tier two. There are no tier twos, so not gonna move. He's done. Boom. All right, now the merchant, the merchant is currently on Neo Damascus. So gonna go to Lunari. And Lunari, so here, going to there, and moving nine. Planetary borders are down. Y'all are gonna have to help me remember this. So he can go straight lines. Planetary, still the one around the star, probably still going to matter, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and done. Only moves once, and there, he's going to hang out right there. All right, so done. And now the scoundrel will go, and the scoundrel hates us, move to us, and if in range, attack. And the scoundrel still has a blaster, so is going to move six to come after us. We are here. He is there. Move six, can move through the gate, and there's no teleport with the gate. Yeah, I don't think he's going to try and go into the defective gate. Although it gives him a... Oh, that's an interesting thing. What do y'all think about this? They can use gates. So there is a chance. So six, one, two, three, teleport. And that would give them a point. And then they move three more. That's what I think they would do. I think that's what they would do. So the NBCs is move to target. Let me look at what it says for that. Uh, gets as close as possible. What do y'all think? That's actually kind of a tricky question on that. I don't know, because they are allowed to use gates. They'll take the most direct route possible to targets. If there's more than one most direct route, the player controlling the NPC determines the path. Eh! I mean, direct is a straight line right here, but I would argue that he might take the chance to do that. Plus, it's a point for them. Right? I mean, I'm trying to work for them, and I probably shouldn't be, but what do y'all think? Help me out, peanut gallery. Gate or just beeline it to us, because he's not going to get close enough to us, right? So he's only going to move six. One, so that would be, let's see, that would be, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six to there. And, and it'll give him space rats. I mean, there, potentially there are there are a couple of gate or a couple of spawn points that are further, but everything else is closer to him for three. I mean, the majority of them are probably closer. Eh, it's close. 
Okay. I think, again, kind of like what uh, Mark Herman said about Solo. As long as you're, you're doing the best you can and not trying to circumvent the rules, then do your best judgment. I think it would use the gate. All right, and it seems the majority of y'all agree, um, since he can't get to me, right? So therefore, one, two, three, they get a point for that, so I don't want to forget this. So they get a point for that. And now, going to roll d20. Fourteen. All right, let's find fourteen. Is fourteen out there? Thirteen is... There's 13. Is there 15 out there? 15 or 14 for that matter. Let me look. Do it systematically. No, 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 no. 13 it is, looks like, right there. So it would go there and then three more. One, two, three. There we go. All right, and they get the point. All right. So he's done. And now, uh, no, no, and no, so they just straight up roll. 19, ouch. They get two points for that. Ouch. 19. Whew. Two points. All right, so that's one there, and... Another title, The Avenger. Actually, The Avenger might come out. Yeah, The Avenger should not be in the deck. So disregard The Avenger. Generous. Also should not be in the deck. I didn't take them all out. I didn't go through them. I apologize. The Destroyer can be in there. So here we go. All right. So The Destroyer says, claim this title, destroy two enemy ships in one turn. That seems ambitious. Not going to lie. Definitely seems ambitious. But it's worth three fame points. Immediately after rolling an attack, you can re-roll one of your dice. If you, see, if you get that. All right. Well, there you go. So that's available out there as well. That is the end of a turn. That is the end of one round. So the gates are still down for another two turns. Okay. So it's our turn. With our Big old ship. Okay, so here we need to get the burning horse. So something to keep in mind. We could just punt on that. We can't sell it anyways because this is full. So if we were to self-destruct, we could choose a, a spawn point right there. And then we would need to move to that spot right there. We cannot sell Halo either, so stopping there to harvest doesn't make a lot of sense. But if we were to... Huh. Something else to keep in mind. If we were to spawn... Y'all can't see that, sorry. Still can't see it. There we go. If we were to spawn on five after self-destruct, remember the gates are down. So if the gates are done, down, shield rolls are ignored. So I would argue that going on to Loath or Loath then doesn't make us an outlaw. Is that true? Because we're not going through the gate? But either way, one, two, three, we would have to roll to get into the nebula there. And then we would put 4,000 on here. And then, uh, and then we have to make it to Neo Damascus, which is right there. Oh, wait. If we self-destruct, we lose the mission. Never mind. <sighs> okay, so hold on. Maybe we don't do that. Hmm. 
We need some offense, so we need money. How, you know what? Another option. We could spend a turn to go over here to salvage, but we run a risk of blowing up. So if we blow up, is it the end of the world? We would lose our mission and we would lose anything that we've acquired already. Hmm. Hey, Rocky. Ah, what do y'all want to do? This is hard now. The fact that we don't have any offense is what sucks. We don't have money to fix that. Okay. We could, we could scan and see what happens here. Yeah, the problem with the smuggle is it's so far away, right? To go from here all the way to there, all the way to there, we're not going to be able to do it in one turn. When the planetary boundaries are down, so the movement is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, stop. So that's 12 away. And then one, two, three, four, nope, one, two, three, four, five, six, that'll help, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, that seems unlikely. If we dimension ten, we lose our mission. We lose the cube and we lose the mission, which defeats the whole purpose of going over there. We do have our impulse. So if we were to go there and then back, Nah, screw it. Let's do the mission. Screw it. Let's roll. So. Okay. Let's do it. That's going to be a seven. Oh, we don't have. Oh, God. We don't have. Oh, hold on. Shoot. We sold our GTS. That's a five. Oh, God. Hold on. I don't know if I actually want to move. Let's see, pick up the orange cube, sell them at Lothar, then do the mission. Yes, we could. Where do we pick up the orange cube is the question. Oh, you know what? We have one of these, and the, uh, if we get another, that's going to be uh, $2,000. So we're going to impulse instead. To move there, this is getting a little cramped. And the board's going to move, because we're going to... We're going to scan here. We could blind jump, but no. And that's going to be on the T. So 
So the grinder is an ice asteroid. We need that there. Comet goes out there. Yeah, it just makes it makes too much sense to not do that. Um, Oh, that's actually, oh, you're right. You're totally right. There is that cube up there. You're right. I forgot about that. Good call, good call. I totally just spaced on that. See what I did there? So I want to go get that exploration token right now. So now we will engage our engine, and now we will roll. That's a five. That feels genuine. That's good. So five is going to be... One, two, three, where the comet is. Comet will move one there. So that was three. We will go four there. And then we have to roll for ice damage. One through 10, but we do have shields. That's five. We do have a re-roll. Reroll or use a shield. Have a good one, Christos. Hmm. I think we reroll personally. What do y'all think? I guess technically you can't move where the comet is. That's actually a fair point. So we were here. Fair point, but that ship sailed. So yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think we re-roll. So we use our attack X. So yeah, I guess, I guess you can't move where the comet is. I was thinking you're coming in behind the comet. So going forward, all right, fine. So eight, that's terrible. All right, we will use a shield and roll for our shield. So uh, that was an eight, so we'll take three ice damage, right? I think I rolled an eight originally, so it's gonna be three ice damage. We're gonna end up on a planet anyway, so that's fine. I'm not worried about it there. Um, Then we get the token. The token is five movement immediately. And we'll turn those in for 2,000 credits because that's going to be offensive weapon. And we immediately have five movement. So that'll be one, and then we'll use the comet again or move the comet. One, two, three, four, five. Four movement left. Is it immediate or is it you have on this turn? Immediately. So we have four left. Okay, screw it. One, two, three. Do we want to stop and buy anything there? We have four movement. Where can we sell that at? We can sell it over on Lo Loath. There's 
There's no place to sell Terra other than Loath, I think, or Loath. Huh. We have a mission already, so we can't get another mission. You know what? We have four movement. Let's go one, two, three, and stop. Are we going to make it all the way to Loth this turn? I don't think we will. But we will next turn, and we're not going to self-destruct, so I'm okay with that. That's going to get us a ton of money, and then... I think we're like three turns from the end of the game. I'm going to spend a 1000 to grab two Terra. We just have to finish on a planet, and that's okay. So we'll put that and that there. So we're done with that movement. We activate one more engine, roll an eight. You, we can if you have the mission computer. Five movement. One, two. Three, four, five movement there. That would allow us to buy one spice for a thousand. It's not worth it. One, two, three, four, five. We're not selling anything there. And as long as we don't roll a one, we'll be able to get that exploration token as well. So we'll engage our final act or final engine. And we got three movement and we'll go one, two, that's going to be a cyber, I believe that is. There. And that's it. And we have a thousand to our name. Okay. We're on a planet. Uh, we'll spend the thousand. Oh, check that. Ice melts on planet, doesn't it? I'm looking for that uh, ice damage uh, melting. During your business phase, you may remove all ice damage for free. Done. So we don't need to pay to get that removed. So the ice damage goes away automatically. Okay, good. Uh, recharge automatically. So we have a thousand. The reason I bring this up We can do one of two things, the way I see it, is we either get a level one blaster or missiles. Yeah, here are our options. It's either that, that, or our movement back, our plus two movement. What do y'all think? We're going to buy one of those because we're about to get a ton of money next turn. Which do y'all like?
So while y'all are thinking about that, we will recharge our energy to there, and these will come back to us. I mean, I think being able to move a lot right now while the map is wide open and there, the planetary borders are down, I think that makes sense. That's exactly it. Buy the GPS now and buy a bigger weapon later. I like that idea. I like how y'all think. So we'll hold off on those, but we'll take the, uh, we'll take the GTS now. So that will go right there. There's the thousand. All right. Uh, we have no fame in which to be able to claim this turn. Refresh our impulse. Done. Our markers. Done. We're done. So then, uh, looks like it's going to be here or here, and I'm going to go ahead. We'll explore that for the game, and we'll do it with the straight line. Uh, we have the red gulch. So that is going to be mining for Terra, right there. Okay. Another exploration token, come out right there. All right. So NPCs, Enforcer, uh, doesn't move. So the Enforcer, nothing's happening with him. He's just hanging out. The Merchant, where are you trying to go? I probably ought to put a little cube on here to remind myself. Uh, on his way to Lunari. So going to move nine to Lunari if possible. And I think they'll make it. So let's look. Where are we? All right, let's move that one. That's going to be the majority of our actions for the next turn or so, so we'll put it there. All right, so moving nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Made it to Lunari. So they're going to buy a cargo. That is going to be a... That... The one that's down here doesn't matter, so now he is on his way to Dorian 5. If three or more cargo is aboard, they get a point. So every turn, they're going to get another point. Okay, so here, I don't want to forget that. So that's going to go there. We'll draw an event. This is getting scary. They are getting way too close. Done. The scoundrel hates us. Scoundrel will move to us six away and make a beeline to us. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not adjacent, does not attack. Okay. All right, so they are done. No, they're not behind. Already gave them the point for that so they don't get anything else. And now going to roll, hopefully, um, oh. roll low, because I feel like we have a chance this game. Roll low. There we go, a five. All right, it's one point. It's not the end of the world. They're at eight. That's the end of the round. There. And now, new event, loyalty. And I think loyalty stays in play. Let me look. Yes, I took the events out. Loyalty says, a change in political wins. When this card is in play, immediately when this card is drawn, roll a d20. All neutral planets are now considered outlaw and all neutral are considered lawful, depending. And that's just the way it is. Fourteen. Neutral are now lawful. Okay. Okay. We're playing to 10. 
This is close. All right. It's our turn. Whew. Getting tense. All right. So, we, our mission for 4,000, hmm. so we have all of these, wanting to get there. Our mission, we pick up here, and our mission, we deliver a little bit off screen to the left. So. That's got to be number one. That's going to be worth a point and 4,000. Plus that is going to be another point. That puts us at six. When that happens, the NPC stats will flip. But I think it's worth it. And then that will be where we pick up potentially for 4,000 more. So that's what we're trying to do. So we're going to engage our engines. It's going to be up to eight, plus two to that is seven. One, two, three, four. That's still not working. Five, six, seven. The gates are down. Uh, you know what? Screw that. Seven, and we pick that up. That gives us another thousand, so there's that. Okay. So we need six points. Doesn't look good. Well, if we, if we end up one turn away, we end up one turn away. So be it. Roll again. That's a four for our engine because plus two. One, two, three four there. So now we can sell everything for a thousand each. So that'll be 5,000 for all of that plus a point because at least two. So there's a 5,000. All of these go away. And it doesn't consume any of it, does it? Well, no, it doesn't produce. What happens with that? First time we've gone to Loth. Um, no, it sells exactly how it works. Okay, so Loth does. So check that. I can't sell that one. Because... The, no, check that. We sell everything. It just, nothing comes out on the board because Loth doesn't produce. So we do get 5,000. And we get a point there. And once we are halfway, this flips over to the ugly side. So it's going to be even stronger. Okay. So at most, we have 10 movement left. That doesn't look good. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, we're not going to make it. Okay. Well, hell, what do we do then? That puts us at six. Well, you know what? How about we uh <laughs> how about we blind jump? Well, no, the uh all planetary shields are def are deactive deactivated and planetary shield rolls are ignored. So I guess that still we now have a bounty on us. I guess so. Because we did interact with the planet. So okay. So we now have a bounty, and 
This will go on us. So we are now an outlaw. So now the enforcer will come after us. So let's have some fun. We're going to use our impulse here for two. That's going to be one for this. And unfortunately, that's a halo. That goes into our hold. But then, yeah, then we'll discard these for a point immediately. That puts us at six. And then, Yeah, I don't know whether or not how the power crisis interacts with the planetary shields being down. I don't know. I, I, I really don't. But we're going to blind jump. And if it's into the sun, it just, you know what, we go out in a blaze of glory. We're going to blind jump right there. We have one movement left from our, uh, from our impulse. It's a square. Okay. There. So now, that's another gate. So now if we use that, that's going to be another point. That puts us at seven. We can buy a point for eight, and we need two more points. Damn it. All right, let's engage our engine and find out what movement we got and then see where it goes from there, right? So there. That's going to be three. That sucks. Because the GTS gives us one more. So that's three movement. One teleports us to that, and that's a point. And we have to finish on a, on a uh, planet to be able to buy a point. So that'll be two and three, and we stop. So we're on a planet now. No, the reroll is not available. Or did we reuse it? Hold on, did we use that? I don't think it matters. I think we ended up having to stop there anyways. can't remember if we used it this turn or not. I don't think we did, did we? So I guess technically our reroll is available. So, okay, fine. Let's use it. Okay, so it's a four. That might matter. We'll jettison our mission just in case. Our mission would give us a point, wouldn't it? And we are close to that, so we're not going to. So no, never mind. Yeah. We'll leave it there and let's not, in case we did use our, our, uh, our mission or our reroll, so be it. All right, so that's the end of our turn. We get recharge everything for free because we're on planet. We're going to business. We have 5,000. That's going to be a point or is it? Hmm. Here's the interesting thing. The scoundrel and the enforcer 
are both going to come after us. But unfortunately, it's going to take so many points to kill them that I'm not going to be able to kill two enemy ships in one turn. So I was thinking we could buy a level three and a level two weapon, but we're just not going to be able to do enough damage to be able to kill two of them, which would be worth three points. So in that case, we will buy a point with that. That sucks, but that puts us at eight points. That's it. There's no fame to be had. Ah, yeah, I don't see anything else we can do. All right, so that's the end of our turn. So Explore is going to be over there. Because there's three, or it could be here. Let's go ahead and put it there. Uh, Pelmont, another debris field, so we'll call it the Y. There. All right. Uh, there is an exploration token that goes on that bad boy. There we go. All right. So we're done. So the Enforcer now is going to come after us because we're uh, tier two or higher. So move to the target, attack and then repeat. However, so that's what he's gonna be doing to us. And he does have a big scary missile. So the Enforcer, ouch, D8 and D20 missiles. Ouch, he's gonna do that twice to us if he's in range. And he's moving nine away, or nine, he's gonna be in range. All right. Now, can we survive? So nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So he's gonna punch at us twice. A D8 and a D20, and we have a shield and a shield, but I think we only use one of them. Ouch. All right, the D6 is us. Ouch. Well, that worked out pretty well. So that's a four for him. Out of possible two to 28, he rolled a four. And we blocked two of the damage using one of them. So we take two damage. I'll take that. I'll take that. So two damage for us. And then we'll spend one energy to reset that. Then he does it again. Yeah, I know, I wish the shields had, then we would be safe, but alas. Uh, what is that? That's a five against our six. He missed. That'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> oh, and I would have had two defenses. That's a fair point. So, allow me to re-roll for the last one, too. So we would have taken no damage. It just would have cost an extra energy. You're right. And same with that, so we're down four energy. But we took no damage. That'll do. The merchant is coming from there to here. And the merchant's moving 15. Let's see. There we go. Moving 15. Moving to Dorian 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we'll buy a cube. It's a Terra. There. So that's going to be a point. Now, then he's going to Kemplar 2 after that. 
All right, so he's done. The scoundrel, move and attack. All right, so what is the scoundrel going to do to us? Moving nine, and he has two D12 blasters. Okay. He's going to get adjacent to us. Yeah, I just, I screwed that up, Chuck. That's all right. So he has up to nine movement. One, two, three, four, and call it there. Stay out of his, there. So 2d12. So he rolls 12 twice. I roll six twice. Okay. And we do have our re-roll. Flipping that back over if we want to use it. Okay, and he only attacks once though. A five and a one. I, th yeah. well, hold on. We technically would roll it twice. So five to one and 10 to six. I'll re-roll the one with our free re-roll. So that's five and five. Uh, 10 to 10, we block. That spends two energy for us, done. But we're on a planet, so that would technically reset. So somehow we survive. But here's the game. That would have been awesome if we could have uh, rolled a 20, but alas, we did not. Now, nothing for the top, not behind, gets one point from the merchant. So a one, two, or three, and the game does not end. So he gets that for the merchant. Uh, that is not a one, two, or three. Alas, that is one point. NPC victory right there. Glory to Rome. Well, I said I was going to use the board. Damn it. NPCs won 10 to 8. Boo. Gah. That's a blast, right? This is so much fun. I thought I was going to really, really dislike this game before we streamed it last night. And come to find out for the... Just, oh, that's killing my eyes. They got to reset. Oh, there, we'll deal with that. There we go. Uh, given the story that this told, I thought this was cool. This was a lot of fun. Um, Fango Wolf, I, I think that's a fair point. Maybe scanning early is a bad idea because it brings the NPCs out quicker, which means they're going to get more points quicker. I think that is a really, really fair point. Multiplayer, I don't know how I like this. I've only played it way back, so, you know, six, seven years ago. And as a solo game and the story that it tells, I enjoy this. And again, I, I related this akin to The Hunters from GMT and Consim Press. I think that's exactly what it is. A lot of die rolling, a lot of randomness, but it tells a fun story, and it was... I mean, if you look at this, I mean, it's it's a little hard to see the entire map, but I mean, I mean, there it is, right? And there's all the other stuff that is off screen, right? But what started out as, you know, our small, small little galaxy blossomed into this huge thing. And I think that's awesome to see it grow and to have it expand naturally and, and, and fluidly. The rule books are not good at all. Um, there are rules written like they're not in the places you would think they would be. And that's frustrating. So the rule books, not so hot. And there are a lot of holes. And so you have to guess and make your best guess on stuff. But... In a game like this, I can deal with that, right? 
use what feels right, what you think the game would do. Like, we gave it the extra point because of the warp, right? And we thought, hey, the goal of the game is to score 10 points, and I would think that that's what the AI would want to do, so that's what we did for it. Um, yeah, it's a great game as long as you don't take it too seriously. But it's a really fun romp. Right? This was this was a blast. I had a great time with this. I think y'all did as well. Uh, so what else do I think? Uh, the economy board... Eh. Maybe in a multiplayer game that comes into play better. I don't really like it as the solo. I think it's too limiting. Um, and it's, it's, it's arbitrary as to how it started. And the fact that there's randomness in what planets, where you can buy, what you can sell already. And then on top of that with the, with the economy board, personally, I think I'd leave that off for the solo game. Uh, two playthroughs. We never saw a dead planet. And there are multiple dead planets. Yeah, that happens. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I got some stuff wrong going through the, the comments where they are. I was thinking about coming in from behind it, but I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, two-handed solo, I could see that. It becomes a bit of a, uh, bit of a table hog in that case because you saw how big the map was getting with that. And then you also have the AIs. And then you also have the cell sword, which is basically a... Uh, a Gun for hire, if you want to do that, and add that in. That's a fourth AI. I don't know. I thought the three was plenty, honestly, and that felt pretty good. But, yeah. All right, and apparently the, uh, the economy board is there in case worlds come up right next, so you can't exploit that. That's fair, I guess. But it just feels really arbitrary to me as is. But again, we're talking two solo plays of it. But overall, I mean, we barely scratched the surface of the missions, even with last night. Hell, it's probably that many total, including all of our draws. So there's a ton of missions. Replayability of the, on this is going to be super, super high. And that was a 10-point game. We could have done a 15 or a 20. The five point win in a single turn, that seems ambitious. Five point, nah, but I think the 10 or 15 is going to be the sweet spot for the solo game, especially if you can leave it set up. And it just looks cool, set up out here on the board. But like I said, there's, there's holes in the rules, but you can use your best guess with it. But overall, I think it's a really fun game for the solo. That's what I'll speak to. I'm not disparaging the multiplayer, because again, I haven't played the multiplayer in like six, seven years. That's a lifetime ago, all right? Um, and Beethoven says, uh, totally really get the idea that to have the Hunter vibe, telling different stories. That's exactly what it is, right? I mean, um, the Hunters is, is you know, a, a, a choose your own adventure, you know, with dice chucking for war gamers. This is for sci-fi space lovers. There you go. All right. Yeah, this was this was a good fun. Uh, more NPC choices would be good. Yeah, I agree. Um, and and how how unclear it is about this or that, like if it can't do that. that so again, there's ambiguities, I feel like, on this, and I, I'm sure that the questions have been asked on BGG, but again, right? So but overall, yeah, if you like solo games and you want something that tells a really good story and you don't mind a lot of randomness in here that is going to impact things for better or for worse, and it just makes for a fun experience, then I would say check it out. All right? Cool. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate all of y'all hanging out with me today uh, and last night for when you were able to, but again, YouTube being down. Uh, for anybody that was looking for genotype, um, not this week. Because of last night's YouTube issue, we did this again, and then Genotype will be next week. No harm, no foul with that. So join me and three other folks uh, remote. We're going to be doing another, uh, we're doing Quebec map of uh, Power Grid tomorrow night. And then Jess has an interview with Norley Lubbers on Friday for Dino Stampede. 
which was formerly Girl Stampede. And then uh, we have a couple of uh, Shores of Tripoli and then something else I forget. Um, yeah, and that's this week. So pretty good stuff. Next week we have Mosaic coming up as well as a bunch of other things. So thanks everybody. If y'all liked it, give it a thumb. I appreciate it. There's a lot of work. So if y'all think it's worthy of a thumb subscription, a couple of bucks each month, you can go to pledgehc.com forward slash HCHQ. Certainly would appreciate the support there. Uh, speaking of which, did I miss anything? Nope, we're good. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Get vaccinated if you can. Be kind to one another. Wear your masks if you can't. Social distance if you can't. And maybe not a bad idea to begin with. And uh, yeah, in-person gaming here, HCHQ, next week. I'm looking forward to that. See you all tomorrow night, 1900 Eastern for Power Grid. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Can't believe we didn't win, though. It was so close! Ah!